Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back. Tonight, we've got a very special show for you and a very special guest. Uh, my guest tonight is, is just incredibly interesting to me because he and his family, and specifically his father, Senator Warner, has been at the crossroads of all of these incredible historical events. John himself is an amazing and interesting character, having a career at various times as a race car driver and also uh, a very well-respected author of late. Um, and he, of course, is very interested in strange and esoteric topics, which may be related to the fact that his father worked in a, a lot of secrecy for many of the things that he worked on or with. Uh, in any case, he's a very controversial figure, and we love controversial figures. I'm going to ask that anybody in the live chat, uh, we have a free speech policy here, but please always, uh, not just tonight, always, always please be respectful of the guests and their time. Um, we will be discussing a few things here tonight. I really have been delving very deep into the subject of so-called or I guess you could say alleged alien mutilations. We've all heard of cattle mutilations, but did you know that there are several known cases of people being people being mutilated and uh, people bringing in aliens for the explanations of what happened? Um, and there are also historical ties to some of the so-called UFO crash retrievals, which are very, very interesting. I wanted to explore these concepts, and I remembered that John had once, uh, we had once talked about this. I know that many of you have asked me, where is John? And he sort of disappeared from Twitter. We can ask him about that tonight. Uh, but in any case, I'm glad to reconnect with him. And uh, selfishly, instead of talking to him off air like a normal person, I'm going to bring him right on, and we're going to catch up here and also get into alien mutilations, and the crash retrieval programs. Some of you know that uh, I'm on the fence with the alien crash retrieval programs. Part of me has seen that it is very likely, in my estimation, that something has crashed, not made of this earth, and we may have recovered it. Where did it go? What happened to it? Uh, all of these things are, are incredible mysteries to me, and I can think of no better person then John William Warner the fourth to help me explore those mysteries. Uh, let's bring him in here. Welcome, John. I'm here, Stephen. Yes, and you brought your big ass pyramid, and it's I your did. wedding I anniversary. Congratulations! Need all the help I can get. Congratulations to you and your beautiful wife. Ten years, right? Ten years. Very happy. Never had an argument. She told you to say that. I bet. No. <laughs> We do argue the fact that she doesn't keep enough gas in her car. That drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, the warning lights are flashing. The tires are low on air. It's <laughs> that's, I think that's the curse of a man. Every time I never borrow my wife's car, but every time I do, it's on E, you know? Yeah. And you go, oh, I hope I make and it to the gas station, you know? There's some sort of metaphysical <laughs> issue going on in, the, in hyperspace yeah. that's really causing this problem. But listen, before for those unaware too, uh, you are also the cousin of Christopher Mellon, and that is and you have been uh, like I, I don't know how to say this politely, but I'm going to try. You have been critical of some of the claims and projects that Christopher Mellon has been involved in for quite some time now, and uh, I, I think that's interesting. You know, and and both of you are from very wealthy. Some would say famous families, uh, and well, we're the same family, the Mellon. Yeah, family. yeah. So yeah, we know each I, other going back to a camp when we were kids, and you know, I met him through the years. I knew his brother Matthew. You know, they're very nice people, and he and his wife, they're wonderful people. Um, I take umbrage with what he's doing right now with Lou Elizondo. Uh, you know, they're they're lying by omission. You know, there's no other way to say it. I mean, you know. Their yeah, program, I, you know, with the UAP task force and Senator Rubio Gillibrand, and now it's, you know, April Haynes, and, the, you know, she's Undersecretary of Defense, and now they've got this new guy, Gary Nolan, you know, and um, 
actually, I like the, the physicist they, on their team now. Um, it was Travis Taylor. I like him. You know, he did the redneck rocket thing on the history. <laughs> yeah, he's entertaining. Yeah. You got to give him that. I'll good. give him that. But, you know, they're doing this wimpy, you know, childish dog and pony show. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm critical in that vein. Uh, yeah, and I wondered if you if you had uh, heard of you know uh, Stephen Greenstreet of the New York Post is really kind of going after some I've of heard the of him yeah more ridiculous claims and recently he released a video and I didn't know that you had seen this but we're it's very short it's uh it's like twenty seconds but I want to play this video for you about your cousin this this is made by. Uh, Stephen Greenstreet of the New York Post. And, and by the way, fair use, we're going to be discussing the video, but I thought important to get your reaction. Uh, let's, let's, and, and it's funny too, John, here we go. Now, God damn it, Bobby. I don't care what Chris Mellon said on Fox News. You're not giving money to that blank 182 fella. But Dad, they promised to build a spaceship. No one's building a spaceship, Bobby. But the Daily Mail reported that. Those people are all insane. <laughs> well that's interesting um yeah that kind of says it all um you know their whole program with tom DeLong was goofy and weird i mean even by ufo disclosure standards it was goofy and weird i was like what the hell i mean greer called Stephen greer called me up and he's like what is this going on i'd never even heard of tom DeLong. uh what was it five years ago i had to look him up uh i'm not a punk rock fan <laughs> and then you're not a 12 year old girl, so you wouldn't no, know about his yeah. music. Yeah. You know, the whole skateboard yeah. thing. I mean, I, whatever, man. <laughs> Your own thing. But it was weird. And now, Chris, uh, his latest thing was he was at the UFO conference in Barcelona. And uh, lo and behold, Linda Moulton Howe interviewed him. And boy, was that a boring shit show. I mean, he said yeah. nothing. And she said nothing. And, um, you know, I, she, I, Linda Moulton Howe, I mean, 40 years ago, my mother gave me the book, Alien Harvest, about the cattle mutilations, because my mom owned a piece of land in Colorado where there were mutilations, and they had been seeing, you know, Black Hawk helicopters and whatnot. And, you know, this is in the early 80s, you know, and so Linda Moulton Howe was on the forefront of that. But I'll tell you what. Some people in D.C. told me my sort of circle of, you know, ONI and CIA retired people is they said, and I, I can't prove this, but they said that Linda Moulton Howe uh, sold out way back in the late 80s because uh, they told her somebody, CIA or somebody said, you know, you can speak on anything you want, but not the human mutilations. Yeah, that's interesting. So she's allowed to talk about cows getting mutilated by right. aliens, but not, not humans. Cows, apparently, uh, you know, and I think back in the 80s, that would have really freaked some people. I would have been freaked out. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Um, yeah, the cows were bad enough. I, I remember that I saw one, you know, on the ranch. It was all desiccated. It dried up in, in the sun, you know, on the Utah border. It was very hot. But you could tell a laser scalpel was used. And I think the story is that the U.S. military began helping the Greys and maybe some others um, do all these mutilations and abductions, you know, my labs, military abductions. And Greer says some were fake with the little suits. And I think Richard Doty says some of them were fake. They had little people in rubber suits, you know, but that's also <laughs> talking about the military being weird. I mean, that's just beyond the pale yeah even the idea of faking you know, a military faking an alien abduction i mean i've heard of these things well it was but, because they used them for blackmail they captured world leaders and they said okay you're going to feed you to the grays and they're going to put you in test tubes and sell your dna on the black <laughs> that's pretty you know, wild yeah you know, and they were like oh shit i'll do whatever you want so i think the u.s military was doing you know parts of the military the black ops parts when i say that um because that's a distinction we need to clarify um 90 of the military has no idea all the shenanigans going on and you know all the high tech they have a little bit of idea you know ufos are flying around the tic tac stuff and the nimitz the navy guys you know i was on board an aircraft carrier the uss enterprise ironically enough 
1995, and I saw UFOs off the fantail with the crew, and the lights, there aren't huge bright orange lights on the horizon, and then they just disappeared. One blinked out so fast you could barely see it. And, you know, the, one of the officers in command said, naval flares, everyone disperse. And I remember Chief Petty Officer saying, you know, uh, they always tell us that's bullshit. You know, we know the difference between naval flares and UFOs. And so, you know, I spent two nights on board their carrier with my dad. And it's true. I mean, the Navy's known about all that stuff. And just because the mill, you know, the, the black ops do the, the my labs, that doesn't mean that that's just a cover also. So they can say more plausible deniability. So it's like, well, are there, you know, you'll, somebody's going to ask Chris Mill about alien abductions. I think Linda Moulton Howe did. And he said, oh, that was just the military having fun or something. You know, that's what they're going to do. They're going to use it as a cover story. You know, the fake abductions. Um, and do you, do you you really believe that fake strange. abductions are are happening? The military is is like um, you and I disagree on on some things, and I don't think Greer is a very uh, credible source. But he calls it stagecraft that the United States government does something called stagecraft, where they pretend to yeah. do these abductions. You think no, that's think really that happening? A point. I think I think some of that is real. Um, if you think about it, it's like aliens have been landing and abducting people f forever. And so they finally got a, somebody clever said, hey, why don't we do it ourselves in our black triangle and no one will know the difference and we'll get them to tell us what we want, you know. And so think about it. It's a great way to kidnap, you know, a world leader or a senator or, you know, who knows anyone and say, you know, hey, we're the greys, you know, <laughs> surrender your prerogatives, you know. You know. Yeah, I mean, I've heard these stories, but I think the problem for me is that I get I heard this from Greer, maybe Doty, both of which are to me maybe problematic. Sources. Doty is a counterintelligence officer. Uh, oh, sure, I'm well aware. Yeah, you know, I'm a friend with Greer. I don't agree with everything he says, but he is a friend, and and so I mean, the stuff that that he's you know he's been on about for thirty years, a lot of that checks out. And that's just for me, you know, I can't, you know, everyone should think for themselves, but, you know, it does check out. Um, and Richard Doty, uh, I think he tells part of the truth and then he, part of it is just counterintelligence and whatnot. It's weird that he's, he never used to say anything, you know, it was just all hot air. And now he's talking about abductions. And I, I think that's like, oh, we capture an alien and he, you know, the alien went wild and it kidnapped a family in a station wagon and, and took off. You know, he tells these stories now on Gaia and whatnot. And, you know, it's like, what are we supposed to make of that? You know, I think he's telling some of the truth, but it's wrapped up in other fabrications. And I'm trying to think, well, what's his angle? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think his what angle intel might be... Always I, intel. I think his angle might be cash. And, you know, for Doty... Uh, the, I thought he was an interesting character just because so much of the UFO mythology we can determine came straight from him. The Serpo files, he's been accused of floating that story. And, uh, of course, the Benowitz case. And uh, I, I just don't know what to make of him. And then uh, now he's saying some things. Oh, by the way, thank you, Jason M. We appreciate your kindness, generosity, and support. I, I think that the <clears throat> lately... He said some ridiculous things, like he has a list of all the people in and out of Area 51 yeah, for cares? a 10-year period. Who gives a shit? You know, he's he's. Leaking. Well, he said he said that because now he's floating that Bob Lazar is on that list. And yeah. I mean, I don't I know. I asked. Lazar I asked. Area 51. I believe that. <clears throat> but I asked around, and like, if he had a list of everybody that flew in and out of Area 51 for 10 years. The government would come and arrest him and take it. They wouldn't just oh, no, let no, no. him he's, out. He's still working for the government. He's working for the man. Well, maybe uh, maybe that's why approved, they haven't taken it. He's got an approved list, and he's got a script, and they say, you can talk about this story and that story and that story. And probably maybe some of right. them are true. Some of them are fake. Because if he's grilled someday by someone genuine, you know, <laughs> um, they, he can say, well, you know, that story was just a cover story. And so it's not true, you know, and, and so they always like to have a lot of plausible deniability in, 
in their little wallet so they can pull it yeah, out. I think I just take I think I just take a lot of what he says with a grain of salt because Oh yeah, you huge. know, I'm a, I'm a computer science guy and the, and another computer science guy sort of proved that the serpo files came from his IP, his known IP at the time. Yeah, but in other words, uh, it came from his computer and he denies that he wrote it or whatever. And then yeah. we have the Benowitz case where he purposefully misled people to believing it was aliens when it wasn't. He he filled up Linda Moulton Howe with a bunch of fake information that he now claims was real. And now he's saying, I have a list of everybody in and out of Area 51. He may have been the person that uh, did the MJ-12 documents, and now he's got news stories. And, of course, I guess to keep the gig on guy and keep those guest appearances rolling, he needs new stories, you know. Well, I can only comment that my dad said that most of the MJ-12 files were legit. So... You know, people can yeah, a lot of people think that, that early dump was real, and then later people tagged yeah, it. Yeah, it was given to and... it was on microfiche, and it was given to someone in, in California and Hollywood, I think, and then it was given to Stanton Freeman, and uh, yeah, and Bill Moore as well. All yeah. my military people say Stanton Freeman was the real deal. He was not a CIA or anything. He was he was the real deal. But Doty, you know, they'll blame a bunch of stuff on Doty, you know. I don't know. I, he's another tool in their toolbox. So they're telling us about alien uh, abductions and alien crash landings, survived ETs, you know. But again, you know, this is like stuff that would be exciting in the 1980s, but not not really today. Um, yeah. That's my opinion. Uh, it's pretty boring. You know, Chris. what Chris Mellon talks about, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I fell asleep. Was yeah, he, he's kind of like Elizondo in that yeah, he just talks call. a lot without saying anything. He yeah, doesn't really like, say oh, much. You know, so. There might be some people out in the universe. We don't know. It's a mystery. And they keep saying that. And it's like, what are you guys in the third grade? I mean, this is nuts. You know, I mean, of course, the universe and the cosmos is full of infinite amounts of people and, and ETs and, and everything. It, you know, we're all equal citizens of the cosmos. I believe that. You know, it, but these guys are just like talking nonsense. I'll go back to what I said in our original interview. I, I really think they're doing a good job poking the disclosure movement, you, know, you and me and everyone, to up our game because they're never going to disclose any of the heavy duty stuff. They're going to let the public, the disclosure movement, and everybody in it do it for them. Because yeah, it seems to me like how do you disclose like without disclosing, you know, the factions, different factions in the deep state? And some factions are like, you disclose too much and we'll, you know, blow up the earth. And so they have to oh. disclose without really disclosing much. And yeah, you know, this uh, is uh, it's this controlled disclosure, like they're yeah. going to give us their narrative they're make version everyone of else it. do it for them. And actually disclosure from normal folks that aren't government military or spooks that's where it really needs to come from because people have to accept it on their own terms you know everyone has to come to grips with all this information with you know what's true what's not or whatever but they have to do it on their own terms you know that's why i always tell people you know think for yourself and come to your own conclusions because you know, those of us who have been exposed to some weirdness in, in our lives and some interesting experiences, that's all they are. Uh, you know, I've formulated, uh, you know, some things on my own, but it's like, you know, we're all doing the best we can. I, I don't think there's, you know, it's like these documents that keep floating up and they're like, oh, this is proof. No, documents are proof, um, you know, and, you know, people making the narrative really boring. And I, I the recent, I've looked at Richard Dolan's uh, YouTube channel, and he's like, Let, we have to figure out how, UFO behavior and reporting structures and whether or not they're square, round, or triangular. I'm like... Yeah, I don't think any of that is relevant. I think, you, you know, know that's if they're here, wild. I don't care if they're here in a triangle Ooh. ship, a round ship, a square ship. Yeah, who gives a shit? I mean, yeah, if... if yeah. ET spacecraft is somewhere near a military installation. Yeah, it should be monitored very closely, and I'm sure it is. But I'm sure most militaries around the world, especially ours, know exactly who that is and where they're from. You know, it's it's not this mystery that they're 
there. All these guys are putting out there, Jeremy Corbell, and, you know, they're doing this, like you said, they're doing this fluffer circle jerk. And you know, <laughs> Joe Rogan and everything, you know, Joe Rogan has Chris Mellon on. Well, if Joe Rogan has Chris Mellon on, that means he's approved. Whereas, you may be right. Yeah. Yeah. And some people have wondered why Alejandro didn't. Everyone else is not approved. I'm sorry, but I'm in the not approved camp. I mean, it's <laughs> going around. The renegade. Circles. Yes. They're just going around in circles. The same old bullshit, you know, boring stuff. Oh, a UFO was seen, you know, over you know Fort Meade, Maryland. Okay. And, oh, that's it. You know, I mean, that's all they do. It, they're talking about the subject, but they're not really talking about it. Yeah, and I've always I have this problem with Lou, like Lou Elizondo, like he'll, he'll say stuff and then and then he hides behind his NDA. You know, right. like we, we may not- have crash retrievals. Uh, well, where and and what? How do you know that? And, oh, my NDA. Like he couldn't say that even if if it was an NDA or clearance issue, he would be he would lose his clearance no, immediately. So is he's hiding behind this NDA constantly every time he gets in a pickle, and he goes right up to a line, but he doesn't cross it. And 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 the games with TTSA, you know, I have a real problem with the fact that they collected two million dollars from the public, promised everybody a spaceship, and nothing, and now they're collecting money again. But Elizondo and Mellon have since left. Yeah, it's it's all a game. And the, what worries me now is people like Professor Gary Nolan, who is this you know, physicist in California, I think Caltech. Or something. Yeah, I think he's Lou Elizondo's replacement. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. And it's like, uh-oh, because this guy's got scientific, you know, he's got a lot of patents, a smart guy, but... I saw an interview with him about UFOs with Tucker Carlson. And of course, Tucker Carlson on Fox is one of the approved talking heads. And so they're just, <laughs> they're just sitting there jerking each other off going, oh, well, it's a mystery. We're going to have to solve it. And then they mention alien <laughs> and Tucker starts to laugh again. So they're back to the CNN giggle factor. And so yeah, like, like, this, this is this is funny. Yeah, play the cue the X-Files yeah, music. They're playing QT right? and, and, and it's nonsense, and but that's what worries me. And they got this guy Travis Taylor, who's a you know a physicist. He's a rocket scientist. You know, he's an astrophysicist. But it's other like, than that, he's he's very intelligent. Come on, if and you're an astrophysicist, you know that the U.S. military has had anti gravity forever. He knows. He's just playing along with the game. Could be. And, yeah, you know, they're getting he's an interesting character though, figures. and I kind of like him because he uses any excuse he can to blow things up or to shoot up rockets. And I'm kind of that kind of guy. Look too. at his interviews; he just talks about <laughs> the same brand of low-level, safe, scare-free bullshit nonsense. It's all the same. Oh well, you know, we've got to figure out the Tic Tac physics, and you know, it's like Jack Sarfati's forum. I mean, I, it's like guys, you're not going to figure this out with you know physics, linear physics. From the 20th century, you need nonlinear, hyperdimensional quantum physics to figure all this stuff out. And they're like, oh, no, 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 I work for CIA. I think I think you're exactly right. And and yeah. here's one example of why you need quantum physics if you are traveling between star Everything systems. Everything is quantum. Everything. No, but it, the thing about this, John, if you're traveling between star systems, you can't wait 20 years to get a message to your home base and back. The only way that they could be communicating in a near instant manner, no matter where they are in the universe, is by some form of quantum com- communication. So mm-hmm. quantum physics may be not only the key to how they can communicate in real time, but also how they can travel these vast star systems uh, even without, I don't, I, you know, I've often thought quantum physics is where it's at when it comes it to like long, you know, they long doing range that space in the travel. 100 plus years ago. In Germany, especially, not nonlinear and quantum physics. You know, you could bilocate, trilocate, quadlocate. I mean, everybody. It's said that that you know, uh, and I believe it that you know, every time happens all at once, and everyone can bilocate or trilocate or quadlocate, whatever, all at once. And so communication is instantaneous. If you're in the Andromeda galaxy and I'm here in Washington D.C., uh, we can talk like we are now. Because that's the nature of time and quantum physics. It's like everything exists at once everywhere. It's just the perception and, and other things. Uh, 
you know, the, the, that's the difference. Yeah, I'm sure that somebody's going to figure out quantum communication between oh, star systems. Have. They, they, they have, yeah. They I've might, heard the Navy have. has had underwater quantum communication since the 80s. And I know Hal Podoff worked on that because he and Chris Mellon hit me up. They were like, hey, you want to invest some millions of dollars in this quantum underwater communication system? I said, <laughs> the Navy's had that for 50 years. Where the fuck have you been? And you were like, oh, no, mine's better. And I'm like, well, I'm not investing in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one thing I've noticed about Hal Putoff is that he always needs people to invest millions of dollars. Yeah, and, and, it's and like, he wasted he wasted so much money. I don't trust him. I wouldn't invest a dollar with him because he wasted all this money. And then he said that Yuri Geller had superpowers. And it's pretty well established that Yuri Geller used magic tricks on him. And he, he fell for it. So... As intelligent as he may be, he's also very gullible, and he always needs money. You know, he's like a yeah, I mean, these disclosure guys are like are like televangelists. You know, like they always need the next injection of money, and then disclosure will come. I understand you know? people. You know, you work hard. I mean, this is you know, you should be paid for your work, but soliciting money is, is very creepy. And you were right about Corey Good. Uh, he's he's like I've got to sue all my detractors. I need money. Yes. It's crazy expensive. And I'm like, this guy's out of his fucking mind. Not only is <laughs> he and Wilcock are you know, that shit, but they're out of their minds asking people for money and so sleazy and underhanded and cheesy. Uh, forget it. I mean that whole thing is just nonsense what's uh, the matter you don't believe in blue chicken aliens and and it doesn't matter being he could have been telling the truth about everything but the way they they portrayed themselves and said oh i need a comic book and i need a film done and i need money for my lawyers and wilcox divorce and it, it, they just promoted themselves like shit now, i don't i don't care if everything they said was a lie or everything they said was true i don't care what I care about is that they're manipulating people's minds in a bad way. And, you know, I'll debate them on that. You know, it, it's crazy. You don't get up there and say, I need, hey, everyone, I need money for my lawyers because I'm suing all the bullies. You know, what a candy ass piece of shit. You know, yeah, you it's really ridiculous. Bad. And at first he called it his Do legal defense track. fund. But that's a total lie. It's not like it's me, not a man. defense fund. You're the guy suing yeah. everybody. It's your attack fund, you know? Yeah, do something it's for pretty humanity funny. instead of, you know, you know, and and a lot of those secret space program folks, I'm in communication with some of them. They're very smart. And they're like, we can't stand those guys. They've ruined everything. And I think that's the point. I think somebody either, you know, woo, mind controlled them, did a great job, and you know, they fucked it all up. And now everyone thinks, well, they're just on board with the Iron Sky, you know, narrative, which is to make fun of everything. And so it it further muddles the entire disclosure movement, UFO, ET, history narrative. And that's the whole point. It, it's, it's counterintelligence basics. You know, if you can't yeah. destroy something, you know, you know, it's like uh, it's like a rare item, like, a, you know, oh, I have this. Oh my God, I've got Rodan's. There's only five of these Rodan sculptures in the world, the thinker. And it's like the Chinese go, okay, we're going to screw you over. And they produce 50 million of them. It muddies the water. The value goes down. The value of the yeah, information goes down. I agree with you on Corey Good and David Wilcock. And before those guys, guys came in and destroyed, the day, yeah. they destroyed secret space program research. Before them, it was people yeah, no, that were doing real research and, and credible Richard Dolan things. was part of that. He coined the term. Joseph P. Farrell, his books, uh, Bosley, um, also uh, Peter Lavenda, my friend Nick Cook, his book, The Hunt for Zero yeah. Point, Igor Watowski, who found Kamler and the Wunderwaffe stuff in the Polish and Russian archives. These guys, plus a few others, built the granite hard foundation for the breakaway German civilization and all they do you know people are like well it went to america and argentina and maybe they went to antarctica to do something you know study walruses and penguins and it's like they built the foundation you can't deny it now it's it's yeah. there it's there in the mainstream history you just have to it takes a lot of work to piece it together but it's like you know, we know the germans had a base down there and all this and this gets into the secret space program so here comes you know 10 years ago i think 
these yeah, people, here comes these well, guys to, the to shoot in all kinds of ridiculous right. stuff. And they said, well, you know, there's the knock off in space and there's all this stuff. But that was built on a solid granite foundation of research, decades of research. And now everyone's backpedaling because they're like, well, they've, they've gone off on this crazy narrative. And it's like 40 years ago, you know, the basics we're talking about now was considered crazy, the crazy narrative. Everyone's like, oh, no, the UFOs are all nice people. And it's like, no, they're abducting people and doing genetic experiments. And oh, by the way, we got missing in Vietnam and, and all this stuff. You, know, it, you have to do the long history of it. And so... I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm doing a research paper on it. I, I want to know, dig up as much as I can about the Project Paperclip and what the, all the Germans did in the United States. And it, it's really hard to find them, but you know, there were thousands, 5,000 or something. And it's like, what were they doing? And, you know, the, all these secret bank accounts, you know, in Argentina and, and the Chase Bank in you know, Manhattan, you know, there's this foundation for the, you know, this secret space program, both American and German, you know, there's a lot to support it. Now, how big it is out there, I don't know, you know, no one's quite sure, but there's no doubt in my mind it exists. The Space Force were created as a cover story for that shit. I, I couldn't believe it. I, when the phrase Space Force news came out, I thought it was a joke when it first came out. And then, you know, my wife was like, no, it's not a joke. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, they're going to. It they're, sounds they're like a joke. Space Force. For everything. Space Force, yeah. John. It's Space yeah, Force. It's, they're building a cover story for everything. And they're like, oh, the new spaceship you saw in the sky over Manhattan? Oh, that's Space Force. And it's like, oh, those you know, aliens with military officers in the Pentagon? Well, that's Space Force. So they've got an out for everything. I mean, it's not going to yeah, last exactly. long. America, people aren't that stupid. They're going to be like, wait a minute. You can't. <laughs> what about all the millions of sightings? Well, we don't, we don't talk about that. Let Chris Mellon, let Chris Mellon answer that. Yeah, now, somebody said space farce. You can't yeah. pass the buck in this UAP task force, the UAP office, on the ca Congress, back to the Pentagon, back to the CIA, back to the Space Force, and just beat the ball around. They can't do it forever. It's like a juggler just adding more balls. And then they're juggling with like 12, 15, 20 balls, hundreds of balls. But at some point, it's all going to come crashing down. You can't keep adding balls to the juggle. You know, that's the simplest way. I, can <laughs> I can't keep adding balls to the juggle. I'm going to remember that. That's actually yeah, I mean, a good analogy man, for they're, what they're trying to do. They're really juggling now. You would be task for No, ATIP. No, AARO. You should look up all the – I'll send you my – article that I'm writing. I'm writing a serious article. I don't think anyone will print it, but I'm going to write it for people. I'm going to send that's it. <laughs> and it's like, you can't even believe the amount of acronyms around the UFO file that they create and they get rid of. Of course, they don't get rid of anything. It just goes to a different department. They fill it with different people. And so there's all these AT, you know, AARO, you know, Aerial Reconnaissance Anomaly Office. What the fuck is that? You know, it's they're, they're just, oh, you need to talk to the AARO for UFO information. Oh, you need to call uh, Senator Gillibrand on Capitol Hill, the UAP task force. No, you need to, you know, and around and around and around the juggle goes. But they're yes, adding and more and more balls. And John, I just want to make you aware that there is, there was a troll in the in the chat. And people are very, uh, this guy is, is not very, uh, listen, you and I agree on some things, disagree on others. And, and uh, because I'm not yelling and screaming at you every time I disagree with you, uh, somebody is upset. Uh, I'm just letting you well, know. Feel free. And like, no, like, but here's the thing, John. You know how tough this job is? Because for some reason, people think just because I talk to somebody that I agree with 100% everything that they're saying and and uh, that's just with not the way the world either. works, you know. Well, I like John and... because he's into these wild things and the ruler oh. side that I don't get into very much. Don't worry about that. So I get the I can get the updates from John of of the the more you know esoteric or like stranger things because sometimes I put on the brakes for that stuff. But I know John like 
he he will listen to all of it, read all of it, and then make up his mind about what he believes, like he was yeah, talking about what, earlier. It sticks you know? to the wall and makes sense logically. And a lot of times it doesn't make sense logically, but it fits the puzzle pieces fit. Yeah. So I remember 20 years ago, I was like trying to get my mind around time travel. That kind of freaked me out 25 years ago when I first heard about it. I knew space travel was time travel, but the fact that they could militarize it, that was something new to me. And I was like, oh, shit, Project Looking Glass. And I quietly asked around my friends about this Project Looking Glass. And most said they don't want to go there, didn't want to talk about it. But my one guy said, yeah, it's real. It's a little. You different. think that's really real? But come on, John. The sources for that are Dan Burrish no, and I can tell Bob, you. Bob Lazar. Those are the primary sources, though. It, it, time travel is part of space travel. It has to be. And so, so yeah, time, well, time being is. relative, sure. Yeah, and, time is happening all at once, and and so you can access the past, present, and future with enough technology. It's really not that hard once you get over sort of the the, the freakiness of it, because we've grown up in a reality where they've taught us about linear time only. And so it, once you get over the hump, it's like big deal. You just plug it into a GPS and a spacecraft and you arrive, you know, in another galaxy at a planet and you're like, oh shit, I'm five minutes early. I'll just wait. And then you wait five minutes. It's like, all right. That would be an interesting, you know, that would be it, an interesting machine to have. To come back five minutes anywhere. before you left. So the timeline isn't disrupted. It makes sense. And a, a lot of sci-fi movies, dig into that and so i i mean i I'm, I'm absolutely sure a lot of these sci-fi movies while a lot of them are junky uh they do tell us bits and pieces of the truth yeah and also it's isn't it scientific fact that like if you if you had enough energy you could manipulate space time you could manipulate it so if you somehow. have a, if you yeah. have a zero point system that's powerful enough you've got plenty you know, zero point energy, John. I, I, I am at the same time very skeptical of it, but very excited by it because I have built these, uh, these crystal power cells, and I don't understand the physics of it. I'm not a physicist, but I can tell you that they put out a tiny little bit of power, and forever yeah. you can power an LED for two years off of one of these little crystal yeah. battery it's cells. Electric. It's like yeah, and you could not. To... A stone, wanna, a stone is crystal, and so it's piezoelectric. John, it's I have pressure. all the parts. I have all the parts here, and I want to build. All I want is a 12-volt version of this that will put out one or two amps. If I had that, then I know you could just reproduce that, and you could make a 12-volt crystal power cell that could put out 40 amps or power yeah, cabin sure or do. house. Or, crystal you know? technology has been with us since the 1910s, you know, and says radio. the guy with the big crystal pyramid next to him. So that's what well, we have to believe. <laughs> you know, and it's um, so, I mean, I'm not a physicist either, but if you read the physics of the bell and, and all these other stuff, it's not that hard. Um, I, I think they figured out free energy early on. And um, the German experiment with the bell was trying to do more, they were pumping electricity back into it, which was very dangerous, of course, but that you know, the Germans. And so. So you believe the Nazi bell really happened? Oh, yeah. That's a real because, thing. There's some evidence me, of it for sure, but I'm still yeah, on the I, fence. I but let me tell you what this is how you do it for me. OK, the USS Nautilus in 1955 was the world's first nuclear submarine. Sure. That we know about. Now, the Germans had uh, the story goes, I've read uh, accounts that the Germans were trying a free energy device from Tesla that was over unity. It was some sort of, you know, over unity device. It's actually quite small from what I've read in their U-boats in the late thirties, trying to get, you know, greater range. Obviously, if you have unlimited electrical power, you don't need to surface except for air. You just use a snorkel. Now the USS Nautilus had a very complex nuclear power plant. I actually met Admiral Rickover when I was young, my father at the Naval Academy. And I talked with him about it. And he said that uh, they were oh, very yeah. naive about radiation in those days. Now, a lot of the crew, from what I've gathered, uh, they've suffered cancer and other things. They all knew the dangers going in. The Navy said, look, this is untested technology. It's dangerous. There might be some radiation. They all volunteered. So they're all heroes in my book. So 
they were they knew the dangers. The, the, the movie about the Russian shub, that's a true story where the reactor went critical. Yes. Right. And Three Mile Island and, and Chernobyl and all this other stuff. They know that nuclear power for ships, especially submarines, closed system, is extremely dangerous, even under the best circumstances. My guess is because I talked to the captain of the USS John Warner Virginia submarine, and I said, look, I know there's a zero point energy generator in there. Traditional nuclear power is too dangerous. Rick over told me. And he, he was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, I can't talk about the power plant in this thing. It's classified. I said, I understand, but I'll bet it can do 90 or 100 knots underwater. And he just smiled. And he said, you're a really interesting person, Mr. Warner. <laughs> nice to meet you. And so that to me, that was, for me, that's validation. Like, you're damn right there's a zero point energy generator in there because they found out early on by the early 60s that subs were going down and the reactors were going critical and everyone died. It's, it's janky technology to put on a submarine. A carrier is a little different, but I bet you the big carriers now use zero point for the last 30 years, you know, because they need to do 30 knots plus into the wind for the jets to take off. Um, they got to have full power. They're really fast. You know, it makes sense. It's not it, everyone thinks it's this wild technology. It's like, no, it's just been hidden from us. That doesn't mean it's that so hard. Do you believe? Do you believe that what a lot of people say that the the free energy is being hidden by you know the elite, yes. the ruling the elite, elite because that they. If I was it, on the well, board of Exxon, I, I agree with people that say that line. You know, oh, if if we had this, it would change the whole world. Because imagine if you didn't need to, well, to work. It's you, going to you happen. Work it's a third happening. of the time, you don't have to pay for heat. You wouldn't have to pay for. Oh no, you will pay for it. You'll pay for it, Stephen. They'll they'll charge. Oh well, if, I mean, if you had a free energy device of your own, you wouldn't have. Oh, no, to. they won't allow that. Exactly. No yeah. way. You got to keep us running on that treadmill as slaves. It, it provides a signal when you spin it up, because it's a torsion field that has electromagnetic signal, and you can you know on a wavelength, and you know it, they can detect that. And oh, so, you think they're trackable if somebody? Oh yes. Fake one. Oh, well, yeah. I better worry about the men in black because I got a bunch of crystal batteries sitting. No, 10 it, feet it, from me. if you built an over <laughs> unity free energy generator of a certain size, they'll come knocking on your door. Yeah, well, Kate Schneider is here. This is uh, Mrs. Dark Journalist is here, and she says she believes they're hiding this technology. A lot of people believe that. I believe that uh, just like the UFO field, though, John, you have to admit there is a whole lot of profiteering hucksters in yes, the world of free energy. It's like anything else. You know? Yeah, there's okay. a lot of fraud and a lot of fakers. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's rife. It always has been from the get go, from the early, late 40s, early 50s, you know, flying saucer movies. They were trying to tell us some truth, but you know, <laughs> keep it in the fiction category. And then they just blew it up in the 50s. Somebody made the decision right around 54 and everything went dead. They were Good like, point. no anti gravity cars, no nothing, no nothing. And the CIA was like, no, just make stupid movies from now on. Well, I do know from historical research that in the late 50s and, and then in the early 60s, they were really pushing this whole idea that aircraft would be electrically powered by electrogravitics or other technology. Very, very soon you'll be getting on an airline that's electrically powered. They thought it would. And then, because... and then all of that and all of the major manufacturers, Boeing and, and all of them at the time, uh, and they all invested heavily into researching this electrical, electrogravitics and all this technology. And then it all disappeared. Well, look, and that's suspect to me. Do the math. You know, in my new book I'm writing now, it's called Sanity Was a Luxury. That's the title. <laughs> oh no and it's short it's about the gustav gun firing atomic weapons at the russian front and and the Wunderwaffe stuff more of that and it's short and sweet and exciting and sad but the thing about it is there's this meeting at douglas aircraft and i've got vannevar bush and john g trump and oppenheimer and all these bigwigs whom i presume had to deal with this during the war with all the food fighters they were like what the fuck you know, the Germans are getting technology from somewhere. Guess who? You know, we've met with some people. Why aren't they giving us the same? And the story goes, we did get some help uh, with our atomic, not our atomic weapons, because that's a big no-no in the universe, because it rips through the dimensions and kills people, but other stuff. And the thing is, you know, in the 50s, they did the math. 
well, if we give anti-gravity to the airlines, I wrote it in there. All these Douglas guys are like, well, hell, we'll, you know, we'll do the moon to Paris to New York run. And they're serious about it. They're like, this is going to change everything. And the military guys are going, fuck, no fucking way. <laughs> we, a, a, we don't you want you treading on our moon base or whatever you know, and our stuff. But there's no way because you're going to make huge profits because you're not going to need, you know, much. You're going to need ground crew and, and, and things like that. But it, the maintenance goes way down. You're not using fuel, kerosene, jet A, you know, all that stuff. They figured out yeah. the numbers on all that stuff in the 50s. And they were like, shut this thing down. Because if this technology gets out too soon, and they did have a point. Yeah, well, there definitely is historical references. See, Tails and Brown yeah. and, and Tesla had some kind of weird electric electric right. they all propulsion had all that. systems. They had it all. But imagine in 1955 if Mao Zedong got his hands on this anti-gravity stuff and said, I'm taking the world with us. We're going to conquer the world or, or blow it up. You know, I mean, they do have a point that the baddies <laughs> you know, around the world would love to get their hands on some of this high tech uh, to rule the world. And a lot of people have probably tried, but they've been quietly snuffed out. But I mean, you know, they, yeah, they, in the fifties, it was all, everything was uh, peaches and ice cream. And all of a sudden it went away. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I, I mean, they did the math. I mean, there, there is There's definitely no history that shows here. that this technology was being developed. And then all the aircraft manufacturers, Hughes and, and Boeing and all these, whoever they were at the time, some right. some names have changed, but they all invested heavily in this technology. And then it, it all vanished. Nobody knows, you know, there's oh, newspaper right. articles claiming that we'd be riding in electrically powered, yeah, we, we should have uh, been. you but know, imagine, craft imagine. in the 50s. Yeah. Okay. But let's, let's you and I put ourselves into President Eisenhower's shoes. Now, the guy had a couple of strokes. So he wasn't at his top game, but let's just say he didn't have a stroke in 55. And they said, hey, you know, these guys in Nevada, they're thinking of letting all this technology out and everything, but we're worried about the baddies in the world. I wonder in 55 how conservative a world it was back then if Ike didn't do the right thing and say, keep it in the military because you're going to upset too many apple carts and uh, there's a lot of bad people in the world who make profits out of oil and coal and gas. They're not going to be happy. The Rockefellers aren't going to be happy. The Bushes aren't going to be happy. The Mellons aren't going to be happy. Uh-oh, yeah. Oh, so we should blame your and family. Yeah, we have to blame oil. your family for for the fact that we all have to go to work every day. We could have had free energy since the 50s. Well, they would have figured out a way to keep people debt slaves, even with anti-gravity and free energy. Because... Even though your your energy bill would be really low, they would probably pay you next to nothing. They would lower your salary. The, I'm telling you, the guys that roll, that work for the deep state, they have some very, very good accountants and econ economics people. They're just like, well, how do we make this work even with – because this technology is coming out, and Elon Musk is you know, letting it out with a dropper. I don't trust that son of a bitch. You know, he's an African. <laughs> you're, not the, you're not a fan of Elon Musk? No. I think he's a, he's a CIA controlled asset, and he's. It weird. is a little funny to me that he he is all of you know, and and I give him credit though that reusable rocket technology is something new. It's 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 pretty useful. Yeah. But the fact that he's still using rockets yeah. for space little, travel to yeah, me it's a cheap. little bit behind, or it's I cheap. thought it's cheap. Yeah, maybe that's why. Yeah, and chemical rockets are cheap if you think about it, but. Anti-gravity, building an anti-gravity black triangle probably isn't that expensive anymore. Uh, yes, some of the rare earth metals and other things used in them, carbon fiber and everything, they're probably not cheap, but you could probably do it and you could, you know, that's what they're mining space with anyway. They have to. Chemical rockets will not work to mine the solar system. You know what was interesting to me about Musk, John, is that when the Russian-Ukrainian war broke out, he, he gave Starlink technology... Uh, to the Ukrainians. And I think that may be the first time that we've seen, you know, like one of these techno billionaires try to actively influence a war. Oh, they've been doing it in the shadows forever. Yeah, but he just went, yeah, here's Starlink. Good luck, yes, Ukraine. You'll always have internet thanks to me. And I don't know how that's not dangerous because Russia could thanks see to that. Thanks to me, as Elon Musk. Thanks to me. 
You know, yeah, but he's, he's a space he's a, lord. He's a fucking Bond villain, full on. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. Yeah, well, if you think about it, he's putting chips in monkeys' brains. Yes. He wants to do humans next. Absolutely. I think the Bond he's... villain might be. But see, did John, I grew up building rockets and stuff and being yeah, a science yeah, yeah. nerd. So, so for me, I kind of like the guy and what he tries to do. But a lot of it doesn't make sense. You know, I get in trouble because I I post memes like, look, a new coal-powered car. And I put a picture of a Tesla. Yeah. People get all pissed off, but Welcome. you know, yeah. I don't understand how if you have a car that's made that's made to you know drive on electricity, but you're plugging it into your house, which is powered by coal fired, uh, you know, it's just this electric car thing doesn't make sense to me because if even if everybody switched tomorrow, we would just burn more coal to make the electricity that everybody's plugging in at their house. It doesn't make it's any not going to help the environment. It's going to help emission. It's not going to help emissions. It's just going to move those noxious emissions somewhere else. Right. Not, so they're in twenty you know, years. Localized. Within twenty years, they're planning on letting free energy out very slowly. But Elon so, Musk, I got to tell you, you know, Ian Fleming was an MI six guy. He knew about the world. He was an occultist. Read the book Moonraker and see if it doesn't smack home a little about Elon Musk. It's a little disturbing. Um, I urge people to go back. The movie's silly. You know, it's from 1980 or 79 or something. It's silly. But the book, I mean, read the premise. You know, a guy, a billionaire wants to, you know, trillionaire wants to start, you know, reducing the population and building moon bases and going to Mars. I mean, that's Moonraker. It's very strange uh, how real life is imitating art. And that's art. I mean, novels are art. And so it's very disturbing, Elon Musk and all this stuff. He's obviously taking formerly classified technology and letting it out with a tiny little dropper. And Stephen, when you make fun of Elon Musk, 75% of people are, are going to jump on you. I found that out on Twitter. You're, you're right about Twitter. that. Yeah. yeah. There's just not enough keen minds. It was just you know a rat on a treadmill. It was you know, energy waste. It's because they're desperate. And I don't blame people for being desperate to wanting a green future. I want a green future. Yeah, but don't, don't, don't you think it would make more sense if, like, if like, the, the electric car would make total sense if they sold it with some kind of a solar charger or they put solar panels all over it no, so it that you, makes sense. Well, when the battery think about this: you're really in work, good. you're in yeah, work you're for fine. eight hours a day, most people. So, yeah. and your car's sitting out there in the sun all day. It would make sense if they lined the thing with solar panels or had some source of power that wasn't plugging it into your house. Most people's houses are powered by coal-fired yeah. power plants. No, I, so I agree. You're right. Yeah. And the, don't bring this up to people. They get pissed off. You know, like, Let them. Let them be pissed off. Yeah. You, know, it, you can't worry about that. I mean, you and I are contrarians. We're going to get mostly heat. What does that tell you? People are misinformed, and I, I don't blame them. By and large, they're incredibly misinformed. They don't know their history. They don't know that electric cars are 120-year-old technology. They don't know that chemical rockets started in 1921 with Robert Goddard. You know, I mean, and, and it goes back even, you know, solid fuel rockets go back to ancient China. I mean, people don't know this, so they don't put it together that we're being flim-flammed once again. And I don't care. It, it, I get, you know, that's why I left Twitter. It's just, it's just, it's a sea of hate and energy drain. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. John, while you were gone, many, many people asked me what happened. He disappeared. He vanished. What? Why is he gone? And I said, to the best of my knowledge, he's fine. And he's uh, off of Twitter, but he's still, you know, around. And uh, I didn't even know how to contact you. I didn't know. That I had his. I had your email address the whole time, so I apologize. But people were asking me, and I said, Probably like a lot of people, he got sick of the toxic toxicity of Twitter and just, you know, well, I people saw, do that. I saw a lot. What it was. It, it's yeah. a, it's my God. I think they admitted it's created by the intelligence services. It's a place for information to flow in a very, very limited fashion. Those tiny little quips. Um, that's why I did a lot of memes. Uh, because it's oh big... yes, actually I, that's what I miss about John Warner. I'm gonna I'm gonna show while you're yeah, talking. I, I'm gonna show something. I get a lot of hate on that. One of the reasons me and of course 
others miss you being here on Twitter is because well, I told memes. everyone to fuck off. You know, I'm, I'm, not here to be liked. <laughs> yes. I'm not here to be liked by people. I don't care if people like me. You know, I, that's not you're not doing this. That's why I'm on here with you, because you don't give a shit. You don't you're care. Right. If, you like me or not. <laughs> if it, you're doing your job, if most people don't like you. That's just the well, way I must is. be doing a good job then. I, I don't know about yeah. most people. I think it's 50 50 sometimes, you know, well, and isn't great. it funny, John, like no matter what you do, half the people are going to love you for it and yeah. half the people are going to hate so you for what? it. I got some other show host busting my balls about this Anjali. Oh, you hosted her. But we actually investigated this girl Anjali's story from beginning to end. And it's largely because of our show and a few other researchers that we know that she lied about her whole story. We got to the guy that was supposed to be like a corroborating witness, and he said none of this happened. She was high, you know, so I stand by. But it is funny. Half half the people are going to love you, and half the people are going to hate you no matter what you do. So I guess you just got to do what lucky. you like, you know? If you're lucky. <laughs> this now, one's great. Look at this. I, did this. I did this for a friend, and I posted it on my little forum with the physicist. But it, <laughs> it shows you, you know, it's – and it's so funny because people think they're real <laughs> and they might as well be, you know, I mean, the sailors, I've talked to some military people in the last year since I've been on with you. And they're like, we're getting really <laughs> angry at the public thinking we're this bunch of adults that don't know anything about UFOs. We do. We see them all the time. These are Navy personnel people. You know, the veterans that come to my farm for the, the wounded veteran hunt. They're like, oh, think yeah. We've seen don't them, th and, and the military tells us to shut up, and we're really angry about it. And, and don't you Miller think if you wanted to see UFOs, being on a Navy ship in the middle of the oh. ocean where you can see horizon to horizon sometimes, Bingo. you're going to see some bad. things. And no light pollution out there in the middle of the ocean, you can see – uh, yeah, they have submarine you know, periscope more. footage. <laughs> I love this. No oh. damn ET will run roughshod over us anymore. Well, they kind of feel that way. I did that for them. I did that for They're the go after guys it. that I know. And there's more. That's this my is new your... book cover. And it's about the Gustav guns. It was the biggest railway gun in the world. And the I German, know about that, yes. The Germans built it to take care of the Maginot Line in France. Well, they just went around the Maginot Line. And so they're like, what are we going to do with this giant gun? Hitler calls it his steel fist. Now, they had to lay dual railway tracks. They had six steam engines. You know, a couple hundred freight cars with ammunition. And how many miles could it shoot something? Remember, this is long before missiles were oh, yeah. in widespread use. But remember, this before the V-2 rockets. This was 42 and 43 in Russia. Now, they didn't have, Germans didn't have rockets that could hit anything with accuracy. Uh, not even something big. The V-2 wasn't ready yet. And so they had this giant Gustav gun. Now, it needed dual railway tracks and 5,000 soldiers to set it up. There was an engineering battalion. There was a flak battalion. There were tanks, you know, a, a million 88 millimeter flak guns, you know, protecting this thing because it's a big target. You can see it by air. But the Luftwaffe had protected it really well, even though the Russians tried to attack it. But you're dealing with millions of tons of, I mean, that thing weighs 133,000 tons. It's, it's unbelievable. And it shot these 800 millimeter seven ton shells. Seven now, ton was the bullet that this thing shot. Seven tons. A seven ton bullet. That's a lot of eight hundred millimeters. Seven it's it's seven and a half feet tall. There's pictures online you can find it that are just people standing next to these giant shells. Now it's just a big cannon, and so yeah, I found several so years ago. I think it was four years ago. Joseph P. Farrell was on Daniel List, and he said, "Well, this gun doesn't make any damn sense. It it blew up an ammunition bunker." It's Sebastopol, and it was the big one of the biggest explosions of the war, if not the biggest, before the atomic bomb. And he said, this gun makes no sense. It cost millions of Reichsmarks to build. It took him four years to build the damn thing. Krupp said it couldn't be done. Hitler said, oh, yes, it can. Do it. And it got built. So what are they going to use it for? Well, as Farrell said, and I agree, it makes a lot more sense if they have exotic ordnance. Now, it's very possible the German nuclear program was a lot further along than we're taught in history. It just was. I don't someone could argue with that with me. All day well, they long. were definitely getting they were definitely getting the heavy water because we had to keep trying to sabotage their heavy. Water. Well, you don't even need that's for a different nuke. They had several a different kind different of programs. device. You're right. 
right, in case one was blown up. And so they had several different uh, scientists and physicists, Walter Gerlach, Heisenberg, you know, Hahn, all these other physicists working on this stuff. But they probably used a little bit of uranium-235 in a three to five kiloton shell because uranium was found in the Sudetenland in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> There's plenty of U-235. Now, how did they purify it? Probably at IG Farben. Did they have the laser going in, in 42? No one's quite sure. Uh, they might have. But remember the 27 million casualties on the Russian front. Disease and starvation, the gulags, Stalin treated his own people like shit. All that is true. But come on, I talked to some Russian uh, historians and they say, we think it's closer to 30 million. Now they used the, the thermobaric rockets, the Nebelwerfer, and they might have used Taba nerve gas, which was being developed uh, in Poland at another factory. Um, they might have used all three. That's a lot of people to kill. And I, my foreword of my book explains my theory, and it's based on Farrell and some other people's. You know, come on, they had to have something to kill that many Russians. I'm sorry, and it wasn't bullets, bombers, tanks. And so you think they might have had this in operation with some sort of something. dirty bomb I, technology? I or? think they used whatever they wanted. I think they used Chabin nerve gas, maybe. I think they used the Nebelwerfer rockets with coal dust and fuel oil. It makes a thermobaric weapon, which is like a small tactical nuke. And then maybe the Gustav gun did have some exotic ordnance. It was a pain in the ass to set up. It, took, it was time consuming. But I mean, if you lob a five kiloton uranium shell on a Russian you know, battalion, bye bye battalion. And one fell swoop, like 300,000 men, a whole division, you know, it, it, it. Yeah, that's a lot of people to kill in one shot right. like that. And unless they had something like this. Yeah. Yeah, Stalin, but even seven Senator, tons of even seven tons of conventional explosives well, around the time of World War II. Spread your troops and tanks out. It's not going to do a damn thing. And a lot of people say, no, no, they they disabled the Gustav gun in '43 in Prague or in a railway yard somewhere. And it's like, well, what was it doing up until then? Because the Russians were advancing into eastern western Ukraine by the late '43, early '44, and so the Germans were being pushed back. So I think maybe, and that's what my book is about, the possibility that it did do some damage with nuclear shells. They probably didn't have a lot of them. They were probably time consuming and difficult to build. But the Germans, you know, you got to admit, I mean, the Germans just are incredible. The more I learn about them. Yeah, and the I, engineering they, 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 they had. They did have ET help. <laughs> and here's the deal. Once you, once you wrap your head you around. You believe that they really had ET help? You it think makes so? sense. Herman Oberth said it. He said we had people help from people of other worlds. I mean, come on. It's, You're right. He did he, say that. He did ETs say we've been had... around the earth for millions of years interacting with us. We're part ET. We're all cosmic beings. They're just some folks from out of town. Big deal. But if, but if they had ET technology, wouldn't shouldn't they have won the war? So did we, but a less lesser amount. So you think both sides really? You believe that whole thing that both sides it had makes sense to because some sort of extraterrestrials. It makes sense because our, our our Manhattan project was not going very well. It wasn't producing enough uranium, and then there's this story about a U-boat that docks in Iceland with a bunch of uranium and gold canisters. And hey, all of a sudden we've got two bombs ready to go in August on Japan. Now that's, you know, that's yeah, fairly yeah. provable. So you know. Yes, we got help from the Germans, you know, uh, you know, if ETs were helping the allies, and I think they did in a limited capacity, but they were like, we're not going to help you with this nuclear thing because that's that's a detriment to everyone in the universe. You let one of those things off and everyone in the universe feels it. And so, you know, it makes sense. The Germans, you know, from Frederick the first with the steel ramrods and you know, the goose stepping to maneuver his troops more efficiently and then, you know, uh, Frederick the Great, you know, all this stuff and unified Germany and then Bismarck and, and <coughs> all this stuff. The German technology curve from the early 19th century up until end of World War II was like this straight up. And it, well, couldn't, it, that, couldn't that be just a side product of, of, of funneling huge amounts of money into their, yes, their technology at the time? Technical schools and physicists, but come on, folks. 
they're human beings like the rest of us. They put their pants on <laughs> a leg at a time. They put their dresses on, you know, one drindle at a time. You know, it's here is this uh, excellent the other concept meme. That, that that's a wild story that ETs were helping the Germans. It's not. Get over it. ETs have been interacting with the human race for billions of years, if not, you know, since before we existed. Come on, we don't own this planet. We never have. It's oh, the Germans didn't get help. Oh, I saw that in Iron Sky. Now, so what? Hollywood makes fun of it. That's a red flag. And here's your Space Force graphics. The Chief of Secret Space Operations, U.S. Space Force, serves as principal. A uh, uniformed advisor to the Secretary of the Air Force on USSF off-world activities. You made this and people thought it was real, didn't, didn't I they? I floated that around D.C. <laughs> I'm sure I does. saw this, John, on five different sure it's alien on the Pentagon forums on server Facebook. Somewhere, you know, it just, yeah. I need to poke these people with a little stick. You know, they, they probably found <laughs> that very funny. But a lot of people do think these little things are, are genuine. And I make them... You know, this guy's real. John Raymond's ahead of that. He'll probably see that yeah. and go, ah, you know, John Warner again. But, you know, come on. Look at this. <laughs> they put a UFO in a, in a fucking... Yeah, UFO come on. Are you one of those people? Come on, John. You think just because they put a... Don't you think somebody could have just been having a goof and no, put that in there? That's on their official website. I thought it was fake first. And yeah, but that was unofficial, like a mock-up, they said now or something. They pulled it. I yeah, think. wink, wink, nod, nod. Ha, ha, ha. They get it. <laughs> We get it. Yeah, we're gonna start our journey with with John Warner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, this stuff becomes a lot less wild when you really study it deeply with the history component. It becomes a lot less wild. I mean, so what if there's aliens? Big deal. Everyone's like, "Ooh, aliens! Ooh, aliens! <laughs> we're aliens!" Yeah. We're you're, yeah, but see, so you're crazy. you've already we're passed aliens. that. John's already past that threshold where he's just like, the aliens are real. They're visiting our Yeah. You know, yeah. I told everyone Star Trek was real. My dad's like, Star Trek's not real. And I said, Dad, I think it's going to be. I was right. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm sure the U.S. military and, you know, corporations, that probably makes some sense. They're out there in space. And John, you do have an interest in a lot of space things. Like, uh, but just to lighten the mood, I've real been quick. to some of these military contractors. They, <laughs> I have to tell everybody this: incredible. John, John sent my children astronaut ice cream. These are freeze dried ice cream sandwiches, and he sent them to my children. And my children went crazy for these things. So much so, John, that they teamed up. Right. And the younger one figured out how to get the hook off the pantry with a lightsaber. He could jam that. And then he sends his brother, you know, they do this with cookies too. They, you know, stand on the chair, get them down. So thank you for that. They went nuts over that stuff. It's freeze dried ice cream like they give that's, the astronauts. And how cool yeah, is that for good. little boys? Right. Well, so that was thank for your you. Cabin so you could go camping and stuff. But, yeah, well, know. that too, and I also want to uh, thank you for the, for the uh, all the he, John sent me all this cabin stuff and survival gear, and he, one of the things he sent me, it's not a first aid kit, John, that you sent me. You sent me like the a military. field surgical military yeah. first aid, and there's like what everything it, in there, and I burnt myself. I burnt myself. Do to anybody in, in an emergency? Yeah. I told all my friends. I said, look, I don't mean to. Yeah, be you got to have that stuff. But you should prep a little bit because, and I was yeah. No, I burnt myself real good on the wood stove. Two of my friends prepped, and no one else. They were like, "War's crazy, fuck them." And it's like, <laughs> well, I'm giant. building an apocalypse cabin, so I'm ready. You need a giant yeah. med kit. What if, what if, what if we do have a national emergency and you don't have electricity or a phone? You can't call an ambulance for one of your kids. You're stuck with what you have. Yeah, and so, and thanks to you, John, I have this amazing big, medical kit. I, I went and I nervous. couldn't. I didn't know. I, I I burnt myself at the cabin, and I burnt myself pretty good. Blister burnt, like second, yeah. maybe I don't know. And uh, I I go. I I knew I had a, a first aid kit, but I had a crappy one. Had nothing in it. I go. Oh, John sent me that med kit, and I went in the pack, and there was stethoscopes, scalpels, those forceps, all kinds of bandages and dressings and burn cream. So I put burn cream on it. I put a dressing on it. It was fine in two days. So thank See, you very I much. I saved your life. I saved your life. 
Well, at least save me from being in, uh, you know, you look at this. The troll is still here. Sounds like a payment to me. Yes, John is bribing I'm, me with uh, with a Christmas present. Shut I'm, up, you dumbass. <laughs> well, don't listen to those people. And that's why it's what Twitter, you know. No, people are, keep to, people keep timing this guy out. I don't know what his problem is. A lot is, of these you know? are robots. They're bots and trolls. They're, or they're uh, or they're 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 always sock accounts. There's yeah, some but, coward who has some problem with me who doesn't want to come here with his real name and address to me. So they use the fake accounts. But I did want to get into this. This subject is fascinating to me, and that is the subject of human mutilations. And I have found various sources that claim that along with the crash retrievals came proof or evidence that the aliens were harvesting human organs or human tissue or human blood samples. And that may be the reason why they were so adamant to cover it up. It wasn't that they were afraid that people would freak out that there was aliens, but that they were afraid people would freak out that there's aliens. Right harvesting and mutilating people and taking parts out of people yeah that, that is, what is what is the sources of this of these stories though is it credible There's sources? many sources i i mean i can't prove it i mean but but let's look what we can prove look at the severe and incredibly expensive and vast security apparatus in the united states it's unbelievable everyone's like i don't have any privacy anymore my they're listening to my cell phone it's like you don't know the half of it. I mean, they know what where everyone is and what all your bio functions are. If that's important to them, you know. Oh, they're getting into that now. Yeah, yeah they're going to do biomarkers yeah, and now. Companies will drop people, and but it's like they want to cover something very, very dark. What is it? That's what I ask people. It's a rhetorical question. If we've had seventy-five, let's just say eighty years of secrecy since World War II, probably before that. Uh, but you could you didn't need much in the 30s. It was easy to fool people. There wasn't television hardly at all. Um, what are they hiding? Why the secrecy? My father said it to me. The secrecy is killing this country. They all knew it. And they said that nobody on Capitol Hill could do a damn thing about it because there's so much corporate money and the CIA and the DIA and, and NRO. Breakaway. Deep state. With. Yeah. Okay, so if, if all this stuff is nonsense, why, folks? I mean, why? You tell me. So much secrecy. You could prove that. And they're like, oh, our enemies. What enemies? And China's not going to attack us. We're their biggest market. Russia, Russia and America are never going to go to war. You know, a couple of MiG and, and you know, Phantom pilots dueling in Vietnam, big deal. You know, I, you know it, we've never really fought the Russians. We're never going to. It, it's just stupid. Um, they're hiding something massive. And everyone's like, mm, gee whiz, I wonder what it is. National security, national security, everything. Okay, you tell me. You know, they're, they're diddling out this dropper UAP nonsense with my cousin and Lou Elizondo and, and Senators Dolan, you know, whatever, Richard Dolan and all those, Senator Gillibrand and, and Rubio. Why? Yeah. Because they have to. Somebody is poking them in the rear end with a stick and you've got to do something you morons now get out there you know and do something do a dog and pony show otherwise it would have been status quo uh steven you know up until 2017 the military never admitted anything anomalous no so and, and, and in fact they, they story. barack obama actively lied and said that they yeah, weren't investigating ufos or anything like that so and then Trump, later so is biden you know, they're all liars yeah. they're all liars you know, they, they can't say Jack Trump danced around the UFO subject. What an asshole. I don't trust Trump at all. I don't trust any president or politician. I trust no one. You know, yeah, you're, that's why that's one of the reasons you and I agree on many things, yeah. because you know what, John, so people, all this stuff people come in true. here and they and they want me to be right or left or yeah. pick a side. And I always say the same thing. Both yeah. sides are criminals. Just because you pick one side that you decided people. is less criminal doesn't make you. You know, yeah, they're so all people, criminals, politicians. I don't trust them. They're always any of voting them. for the same. It's only one party, and that's the deep state. I mean, I'm sorry. You, Peter Dale Scott wrote a book yeah. on it. Please read it. He entitled it The Deep State. Peter Dale Scott. Read it. See what you think and, and let people come to their own conclusions. What is all this secrecy for? 
oh, we've got another mi hypersonic missile, you know? No, the, every if you read Jane's Military Weekly, and I, I have U.S. Defense Command, uh, you know, on my YouTube channel selection. I mean, they they like look at our new weapons, look at our new toys. They yeah, they love to the, they love to the roll the out the weapons. Yeah. yeah, we can hit the moon with an electromagnetic railgun. You, you know, John, no, on this on secret. this on so this crash retrieval, didn't secret? you tell me that uh that J that James Forrestal saw some sort of that's the story. Like, Organs. That is the story, right? That he saw so the there was the nineteen forty one Cape Girardeau crash, and there was he, ale, there was human body parts right, in that crash somehow. Years went by, and it ate at him like a cancer. That's the story. I believe it. It makes sense to me. Now they, you know, he was a Catholic. He was a religious guy. It really disturbed him, probably. And I, I wrote some of that into my new book. It, some other people are disturbed. And, you know, a lot of people with religious faith, they are disturbed by this. You know, they, they start to realize that religion is a lie. They've been told lies. And, you know, why would God let, you know, God, why would God let genocide happen? I mean, it's so stupid. But, you know, if if all this stuff or some of it, I think 50 percent of the wild stuff is true. What 50 percent? I don't know. But it has to be the laws of averages. What are they hiding with all this trillions of dollars in secrecy and bank fraud and all this stuff that, that Catherine Austin Fitz and other people have proven? What is it? And it has to be yeah, so what about this? laundry. It has to be a new missile. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine, John, what would it do? What what would it do if let's let's just do a thought experiment? What if what if next week or next month the absolute smoking gun proof? that those stories about President Eisenhower meeting aliens and entering into a contract yeah. with them were, were true. And then we tack on the, the there were some crashes and we found all these human body parts. That, of course, would maybe explain why they've been doing everything they could to cover this all up. Because I think people might be a little bit upset if our leaders said, sure, go harvest organs from a select number of our population. Maybe well, they had to because they couldn't stop it if they wanted to. I don't know. That's exactly but, correct. I think Ike, the, the story goes, Ike had an offer from three different groups. Now, one story says all three groups were in cahoots with each other. That's probably true. But maybe let's say like in the film, The 11th Green, they show a Jesus type guy. And he says, we really want to help you with their spiritual development and get rid of these atomic bombs and clean up the environment. And Ike is like, shit, I don't know what to do. And you know, being a military man, I think he chose the more conservative and said, well, I, I think, you know, these other nice people are showing us how to build more weapons. So the story probably is true. Um, but if he got a Hobson's choice, which is no choice at all, it's just three choices that are all the same, basically, because, you know, they were all aggressive or something. I mean, I think we've been given the shaft. The human race has been given the shaft over and over and over and over and over again. And the positive ETs are like, you guys have got to learn your lesson. We'll help you learn that, but we can't do it for you. You've got to learn it yourself. And I agree with that. It's like one of your kids. Is he really going to learn a lesson unless he really burns his hand on the stove? Probably not. You're going to tell him, don't yeah. touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Ow. Now he's well, honestly like, their dumb dad is man. probably is, is, is more likely to burn the house down. I just had right. a big. <laughs> but who cares? I just I almost burned the kitchen down. Yeah, so, but you're right about learning lessons. You right. know, and it is interesting to me, despite what I think of her too. Uh, Laura Eisenhower is convinced of that all those stories are true, and that's the she granddaughter of of she Eisenhower. Is her great grandfather? But you know, yeah, and my grandfather was involved in the OSS and all this stuff, so I believe it too. But the thing is. If, if ET groups are abducting humans for the body parts and genetics, okay, I don't like that either. But, folks, we slaughter each other forever. I mean, millions die every day in wars and, and Famines, are kidnapped yeah. off the streets of Brazil by gangs. I mean, this is a disgusting world. We slaughter each other with abandon. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's true that the ETs are taking millions of people a year, but let's say they did. You know, no one's really noticing. They're mostly poor people, as the story goes, street kids and, and poor people that no one's going to notice and no government's going to do anything about it. It's like, 
is that any worse than us slaughtering each other on mass? Not really. You're so right. It is a fucking what deal. What we about do to it. each We're other. Like, I mean, we. Oh, I don't believe that. That's crazy. That would make people go crazy. Why don't people go crazy with all the wars and all the people getting killed in the streets of the United States every day? Because we're uh, we're used to war, war movies, cartoons, everything is desensitized us to war, crime, and everything else. Uh, half the stuff on TV is horror and murder. You see how the murder detective shows? There's millions of them. Apparently, in the north of England, there's more murders than anywhere else in the world. You know, according to the TV shows, it's like yeah, uh, we. I, I agree with you. We're we're a brutal species. We do all kinds of crazy yeah, things to do, each other. So it's not worse. it's not. Yeah. We're worse than they are. Okay, so they're taking people illegally. Let's say they take a million people a year, and we get trade goods in, in addition, technology in, in exchange. How is that worse than wars and inequality and people starving every day on purpose? It's not worse. It's, it's just as bad. So it's just because you throw aliens in the mix, everyone loses their shit and craps their pants and cries, oh, aliens, oh, no. Because they <laughs> with movies. Well, it would sure be a tremendous waste of space if the yes, universe was populated only by us. So you know what? I mean, you you know, look around you. We live in a disgusting world. Everyone's like, oh, aliens. So what? You know, human trafficking just for you know sex slavery on Earth is massive. Yeah, that is. Screw the ETs who are taking people. Who cares? You know. That sucks. I don't. I, I. I think it's disgusting if it's true, but it's no worse than the human trafficking that exists on this planet forever. People have been in bondage. Everyone's a slave. You know, Elon. Even Elon Musk, if he's got CIA handlers, he's a slave. He bow downs to authority, whether he likes it or not, or even knows it or not. Yeah, somebody pointed out this makes sense, John. It says, "Oh, alien! Yeah. Oh no! You know, it's like we're worse than everyone out there." This this person says, Just "We bad. study every other living creature for our benefit." Yeah, right. And Star so, why animal. would other intelligent species not do the same thing and want samples? Don't you think if we discovered another intelligent race somewhere else in the universe, we would want samples of their genetics of their you sure. know, we would which, study them. We might grab a few. The story, the story is the SS people say that happens in the projects for the super soldier programs because you can't just go out to space like we are now. We're weak and diseased. You know, we need our DNA augmented to survive out there for a variety of reasons, not just radiation and sun and, and all this stuff. It, it's like, yeah, you did know, you see that? Did that say, human. That's a really interesting concept. Did you see the movie Titan? That's kind of like that. They yeah. they took people and they genetically altered them so that they right. would be perfectly suited to the to the world Titan. So you know? the question everyone needs to ask themselves is Hollywood always been telling us bits of the truth. I think it's it's obvious. Op Operation Mockingbird was real. You can prove that. The CIA Oh, like, sure, that is definitely real. Yeah. So why wouldn't they be because you know, if I had to guess just do an educated guess. They're prepping us for humanity 2.0 in 25 years. Everyone's going to be, you know, augmented with viruses or whatever. And Elon Musk is going to put, you know, chips in, in something. And everyone's going to go to work in their cubicle on their computer. And that's that. No dissent. No, no nothing. They own you lock, stock, and barrel. There's no free thinking. There's no nothing. It's it's George Orwell's 1984 on well, don't, don't you think if that happened, there'd be pockets of resistance? Though? Absolutely. You and I that would be, be in a... the hills in the cabin. <laughs> yeah, I'll be with but John Warner. But yeah. waste us. Yeah, I'll be with John Warner in the cabins. You know, The only the reason they're not cabins. killing people anymore, I think, they probably kill people, but they're not killing people in the disclosure arena anymore is because the internet got too hot for them to do that. You know, when you kill somebody, you know, we live forever. Our souls live forever. You're just redirecting energy somewhere else. You know, metaphysically speaking, I talked to Greer about this. He had a good point. It's like, he's like, I hope they kill me because I'll be more trouble to them as an astral <laughs> that's an obi one and I'm here now. Here now. And I'll, I'll be more you can strike me down i will become more powerful than you could ever imagine yeah, maybe he wants too much Star Wars, not that we're jedi knights uh, you know but no one is but 
you know, but while we're on the do, subject of Greer, did you buy this app and did you think that he here's the problem that I have with him, John? He basically claims that he has superpowers and that he can summon alien spaceships and and alien beings. And he's been caught like taking pictures of moths and things. And I, I just don't, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't believe it. But did you try this CE5? Did you, did you try it? No, this I, CE5? I don't. No? It doesn't interest me. I'm not, I see UFOs with, I have Gen 4 night vision goggles. My wife and I, you can see UFOs at night on the night sky, you know, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. All the time, it's not a big deal. They're glowing balls, and then they zip out uh, superluminal. You know, it, I want to buy some night vision oh, goggles. The I've sightings, heard that, the hardware, and the light back. shows are meaningless. And and he's like, no, it's a spiritual connection. I said, that's fine. You know, go for it, man. It's not my thing. What if you summoned a demon from another dimension with you know a mothership? Oh no, there's no there's no evil aliens. You know, it's like, well, good and evil don't really exist. It's just positivity and negativity. But there's some negative folks out there. It has to be as above, so below. I mean, it, it, yin and yang. I mean, yin and yang symbol is probably not from Earth. It's probably billions of years old from out in our galaxy saying, yo, light and dark. There's a little bit of light in the dark, a little bit of dark in the light. And that seems to mirror our society to AT. So I'm sorry. You know, it. I, I think there's a lot of indifferent people out in the universe. They're like, mm, you know, guys are interesting you know whatever and, and and there's you know some good people positive people and then there's some progressive people my god what a boring cosmos it would be if there weren't i agree with you and, and listen on the subject of people that are skeptical I, I do you know we try to have a free speech zone and i think that's a fair question chris johansson says outrageous alien claims by this guy john do you got any proof because people no i never said i don't have any proof i don't have any Admiral Wilson documents under my bed. I don't have any of that stuff. <laughs> All I did was study history and have some experiences with my father around the world, you know, traveling military bases and, and all that stuff. And my dad showed me the deep state, how the world works firsthand. He didn't call it the deep state. Um, but he showed me, he's like, this is how the world works. You need to grow up. And that, that's all I can say is that when I started, I always was studying UFOs and reading books when I was a young kid. Uh, starting with Chariots of the Gods. I was 10 years old at camp. Um, maybe Chris Mellon read it. I'm, I'm sure he did. You know, he, he started off in that same vein. He went one way, I went the other. You know, it just, it's a disagreement in how disclosure should be managed. That's really all that's coming down between us is a disagreement on how that's handled. And I think the U.S. government and the military has, has handled disclosure and the UFO file very poorly over the last 80 years. I understand that, you know, a lot of innocent people will be tainted by the few. And I don't like that either, but it's going to happen sometime. And, you know, whether I'm, a, I'm 90 years old and it happens, that's fine. I, I don't care. But it's like for our children and grandchildren, I'm a grandfather. You, you're a father. This is the, our kids and grandkids are going to inherit this world. Um, yeah, that's a scary thought. Once you have children, they start thinking about that. Yeah, yeah I don't care what they do to me but it, it, they start out on a bad foot with project blue book in the 60s and 70s and now this uap thing and they're just doing a shit job and you know i knew when my father said you need to go forward and, and come forward i said i'm not sure if i'm going to do it dad and he said no you need to do it because you're right after all these decades and everything you're right you know there chris is not telling the full truth it's not good for society. All the secrecy is killing us. And, you know, he didn't like to talk about the financial aspect of it, but he knew that, you know, how, how the world works, bank fraud and, and and how the GDP of America is being siphoned off for deep state. I don't know what it is, but Catherine Austin Fitz thinks it's somewhere around 25 trillion. And what is the, the national budget every year? 2.5? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So that's 10 years worth of our national budget just right. disappears. And what and is nobody all that I ask people, it's like, I don't have proof of anything. Nothing. And John, on another on another but skeptical note. What is all that secrecy for? If it's you have, you, have you heard the rumors? You know that people, some people believe that you and your family are in are some secret bloodline and, and uh, you know, the well, ruling class and the yeah, elite. There's something you, to you have, all that, but I don't know how big of a deal it is. 
But your family is one of those families yeah. mentioned all the it's time. A committee of 300 family. Now, sometimes there they're just called the group or, you know, there's different nicknames. The family. Whatever. Um, but, I mean, it's always, we've been there since uh, the Revolutionary War. And so the story is this. You know, the Anunnaki created a caste system in ancient Sumeria. The lighter-skinned peoples had the better jobs, and they mated with the Anunnaki. The brown people tended to the hard city labor, and then you know, the darker-skinned people tended to the brutal fields out in the desert. Now, that you can, you can prove that in the Anunnaki uh, Sumerian... Uh, Epic of Gilgamesh. The, tablets, you know, the epics, you know, yeah. Ninurta and all that stuff. Caste systems, that's where we got it from. Okay, so it's come on down through history. So you've got to have a group of trusty slaves to rule, right? You know, there's there's a round table of people. They're the top dogs in the human side of this. You know, the all-seeing eye, that's E.T. I mean, I don't. I, people can argue about that nine ways to Sunday. It's fucking E.T. Uh, <laughs> the Freemasons have known this all their lives. They don't call it that. They call it, you know, the all-seeing eye. It's, it's E.T. It's not that big a deal. And it's like... There are the kings and queens, all these bloodlines, these royal bloodlines. What the fuck is that from? And it's all from ancient Sumeria. The Asian world is a little different. They have different bloodlines. But in the Western world, these bloodlines do uh, go back to the royal bloodlines. They intersect. The people have done genealogy and shown that like Barack Obama is somehow related to George Bush and somehow related are. to the Queen of England and the royal yeah, family. And it is, it's, it's weird. Like it's a yeah, weird yeah. rabbit hole, John. It is a and you're hole. part of that rabbit hole, your family, right? Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> and here's an excellent question. I hope what? that you can answer. Everyone's uh, got weird Rugged blood Source. Lines. Rugged Source wants to know what three books you would recommend people to read. Oh man, three books? Well, don't read any of mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I let me think. You're some marketer. You're definitely yeah, a great really marketer. Tough. Don't read any of my books. Okay, here's <laughs> one. I would read Manly P. Hall, The Wisdom of All Ages. I have a copy. Oh, I I, I've it. heard of that book. I've never Manly read that one. Wisdom of All Ages. I would read that. That's number one. Got to understand the metaphysics and some of the occult. It's just part of our world history. It's just part of it. You can believe what you want, you know, Nazis and the occult, whatever. But that's number one. Um Number two, um, I'd say the hunt for this crowd, you know, The Hunt for Zero Point by Nick Cook. It's I like that book. Actually. Groundbreaking book. He's you know, Nick's a very smart guy. He used to work for Jane's Military Weekly. I think he still does. You know, he's not a conspiracy theorist. He figured all this stuff out. And, you know, he, I talked to him. He's, he's not comfortable with it. I don't blame him. Um, so that's number two. Um, number three, that, that's a tough one. There's a lot of good books. Maybe Peter Lavenda, the, um, yeah, the Necronomicon. <laughs> no, um, you, you know, he book. wrote that, right? He wrote that Necronomicon that was popular when I was a kid growing up. Yeah. I would read maybe the Peter Dale Scott, the deep state. That's a good book. I and have then that. go from there. Then read, you know, J.P. Farrell and Lavenda and, and a lot of other authors, wherever your mind wants you to go. But read those three books. And there's the Deep State that's got Manly P. Hall on, on metaphysics and um, The Hunt for Zero Point, which I think is, is lays a good basis for this German uh, high tech breakaway uh, group of people. I think there's a lot of evidence for it. So I, I think it'd start, you know, um, yeah, the secret teachings of all ages. Yes, Bosley's correct. You're um, right. There's another one people. by Wayne Dyer, of all people, the secret, yeah. uh, that, that sounds like a similar title. That's interesting to me. And if you're interested in this 19th century German breakaway story, read Bosley's books, Empire of the Wheel series. Um, they're not easy to digest, but... They're good. I had read Farrell's, all of Farrell's books, if I had to suggest that. I mean, there's a lot of books to read, but those, those will get you started. Um, there's some older ones on UFOs that are good. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I kind of, that's old hat stuff. But, um, you know, and Steve it, Long is here, is a great researcher, John, and he has an excellent question for you. So 
uh, he says John once said that his dad told him long ago to quote move on, don't waste your time on this alien stuff, stuff, live your life unquote. And Steve Long wants to know how did your dad react to your public UFO conspiracy involvements in recent years? Well, in '93, Dad told me to just forget about the MJ12 files and forget it and just live my life and don't go down that road. That's what he said. Uh, of course, I didn't. I didn't listen to him. Um, in his last year of life, uh, I came forward uh, first time with Eric Hecker, and Dad was still alive. I think he died six months later, but that's he urged me to go forward. But he at that point he was so old, you know. He had forgotten most everything, you know. Um, but yeah, he was still alive when I, I did the. I showed him the Eric Hecker interview. He didn't, you know, he was in and out of consciousness. You know, he's very ill by that time. But um, yeah, there's a lot of good books to read. I mean, you have to read books. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. I'm a slow reader too. I really am. Um, <laughs> none of this is going to make sense unless you crack some books and piece certain things together. So your mind, it, it, it's impossible to just listen to people talk about this stuff. Because when, when I was doing this 20 years ago, I was like, shit, I don't understand what the hell they're talking about until I read books. And then it filtered in. And I was like, wow, this makes sense to me. Um, but everyone's looking for proof. I got news for everyone. There's no proof of jack shit in the disclosure movement other than, you know, things like bank fraud and the German, you know, a breakaway group, German in World War II and, and some other things that are fundamentals. But I go back to why is there so much secrecy? Why are they coming out with the UAP task force all of a sudden in the last five years? I mean, ask yourself these questions. Why? And you're going to have to, people have to fill in the blanks themselves. You can't, you can't just listen to people tell you to do that. I don't tell anyone to do anything. I say, you know, do what interests you on this subject. And if it doesn't interest you, then, then don't worry about it. I think it's all going to come out in the wash, you know, in 25 years. Um, I may not. Be yeah, but I'm sure that you can understand that many people uh, like like me, for instance, you know, I have an intense interest True. in this subject, but I, I get frustrated because you buy a book and it seems like a lot of stories without a lot of like backup for the stories. And that gets frustrating after a while. Well, that's uh, why then, J.P. Farrell you know, footnotes his books. Oh, yes, you're right. Some researchers do that, but a lot they of do. people don't. He, he, he's Nick very... Uh, footnoted his book very well. I, you know, I'm, I'm not writing history books. I'm writing history novels, so I don't really footnote. But it, it's like, yes, some of the books they got their information from, they could have been wrong. I mean, you have to kind of wrap your mind around this. That that I believe that our history is just full of holes. It's just a giant piece of foam rubber or Swiss cheese. And so it's difficult to find sources. Well, I found this source, and that doesn't really prove anything. You're just saying, well, this is where I've gotten it from. So if you want to really dig this out, it's like, proof of what? People have been seeing UFOs for 90 years. That you can Millennium. prove. Yeah. Okay? That's proof. You know, there's pictures, films, there's the, the military, the U.S. government's admitting. Well, I would admit, well, yeah, like witness I'd testimony. That's, proof. that's witness testimony is proof if the person right. is credible and right. and we, you know, we, yeah. If we have, yeah, a and we we did talk about this. We did talk about these uh, human mutilations, and and how they're somewhat connected to the crash retrievals. But what do you think about the crash retrievals? Did we recover some technology? Did we recover oh, yeah. some bodies? I think we recovered all kinds of stuff. Remember, there, there's a story that purports that at the uh, 509th uh, Bomb Squadron uh, base in uh, New Mexico. Now, I write about this in my book. The Varian brothers, Sig Sigurd and uh, Russell, they invented the Klystron tube. The big, uh, it, it creates scalar waves at the microwave frequency. It was for a uh, high altitude intercept airborne radar. But the story goes, they cobbled together a really powerful hot rodded version. And they somebody told them, maybe, somebody, maybe an ET, maybe not. Maybe they figured it out on their own. I don't know. And they pointed it up and they, they figured out it would destabilize the time space bubble or maybe the propulsion system on a UFO and crash it. And all of a sudden, you've got all kinds of stuff you can glean out of that crash. Sometimes you could bring it down gently, maybe. 
you know, other times, like I said, I love it. The ETs show up and say, here are the keys. What do we get? You know, they're giving us a, a third hand model. A lot of people have suggested there's some sort of trading going on. Technology. It makes for, sense. It for, makes sense. But there's no proof for anything. organic material. That's a scary thought. What if that's true, John? What if they really are giving away, you know, organic material? Well, it's no for, worse than the wars for and the technology, the right? And the, and the genocide and the and human trafficking we would do on Earth. It's no worse than that. It's it's terrible if it's true, and I think partially, it, it, to some degree, it is true. I think, but it's no more terrible than what we do to each other. It's it's everyone's like. Oh my God! If it has to do with space, UFOs, and aliens, all of a sudden it's unsavory. You know, where have you been? Where, you know, the Armenian genocide, the World War II genocide. You know, where were you? I mean, everyone looks to the sky and the military and the black projects. Oh, they're doing horrible things. Okay, yes, perhaps, but we're doing horrible things on Earth, and we've been doing them for twelve thousand years or more. You know, by all if Atlantis existed, I think it did. You know, it blew itself up. White versus the dark, bad guys versus the white hats. You know, I mean, they killed, they destroyed almost everyone on earth with that war, cosmic war. You know, it it makes sense. I mean, everyone's like, where's the proof? It's like the mass, the sheer weight of the circumstantial evidence and the historical record and what we do know is fact. There's your proof in a sense. You might you be true. If everyone wants yeah, proof. You might be right. Court law. It's like the court. The law is is corrupt. You know how are we going to prove anything? If you shut down all the TV mm-hmm. and all the internet, and go back to the nineteen, you know, before there was radio and everything, how are we going to communicate by newspaper or book, a pamphlet? You know, I mean, the dissemination of information is what makes all this possible. Everyone's like, I want proof. Well, no one's going to give you proof like a document or a photo. Everything that can be faked is not proof. It's the weight of history, the mass of circumstantial and factual evidence. Millions of people for the last 80, 90, 100, you know, probably all throughout history, the Renaissance paintings show UFOs. People have been seeing UFOs in the sky. We've been visited. I don't think it's that big a deal. I think in the Middle Ages, they were like, oh, yeah, it's the Pleiadians again. Far out. We'll trade them honey and, you know, they'll give us, you know, <laughs> the flip <football. laughs> Flintlock musket you know, technology, you know, whatever it was, you know, it, it's not that big a deal. It, it's just everyone is so freaked out when you put aliens in the mix. None of history, at least since World War II, none of American military history and world history and you know, Cold War and everything really makes any sense unless you put E.T. in the mix. Then everything makes sense. But that's hard to relate, you know. I, I well, yeah, I, historically, I mean, people people used to talk about communicating or meeting angels and devils. So I don't see why it's any more fantastical that Guess it, so. it's aliens or interdimensional beings, right? Yeah, there's a you know, there's twelve dimensions of the universe and infinite layers in between. It's like you, know, you shift frequency, and you know, people freak out about that too. It, it's not that big a deal once you study it, and it's like, oh, that's just the way the universe operates. Everything so you truly, you truly believe that, you truly believe that they are gonna, they are gonna disclose sometime in the next twenty years or something like that. You They'll said you think we're gonna have the U.S. government. Yeah, is, is, is the governments, the authority figures of the world, gonna admit it? They're gonna admit and, very little, as little as possible. But they'll say, sure, we've had some crashes. Yes, there's some missing people. We don't know where they went. It's a lie, I think. And they'll just say, yeah, we got some UFOs. You know, go back to work. Go back to school. Learn something. We have this under control. There's nothing you can do about it. John Q. Public, Jane Q. Public, go back to work and shut up about it and let us do our thing and you do yours. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I heard I heard somebody. Oh, it was Jeff. People wake up. I I don't know what to say. It was the truth. I I heard this Jeff from Recon Strange podcast. He was talking about how when that 2016 New York Times article story came out, he like showed it to his dad and his dad said, so what? Do I still have to go to work tomorrow? Then I don't care. This does changes nothing for me that the government suddenly acknowledges UFOs are real. It doesn't change anything. Let's just go out on a limb. I love doing that. Let's just go out on a limb. Let's say everything's true. All of it. 
not often is out there. Nazis in space. They've conquered other star systems. Corporations are in space. They, they helping them do that. You know, there's Draco reptilians. There's Pleiadians. There's the the lion people of Lyra. That it's all true. And in within 20 years, they tell us that. Then what? What are people going to do? Do you want to have riots? You want to burn down society? What are people going to do? You know, it's like this is the state of play. Deal with it. We have to deal with all these bad people out in space. You know, we have to do deals and business deals. You know, we're going to you know, make everyone better with free energy and your electric Tesla cars. Great. Now, you know, fuck off is what the government and the military is probably going to say. They're probably going to disclose 30 percent of all that, whatever, you know, and they'll be like, great. Now, you know, fuck off. Because what are you going to do about it? Yeah, but don't you think that argument think that one of the reasons a damn thing you can do about it and if you want to be like the paris riots and everything and burn everything down fine we'll kill you but don't you that. think that don't you think that argument about the, the 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 powers that be don't want us to know about other planets having intelligent life because then we might move and shift to be more earthling based and erase borders and not care so much about petty squabbles here on earth yeah because we might all come together and they don't want that right well i don't see how we're going to do that i mean religion keeps us apart number one uh, race keeps us apart class nationality uh everything keeps us apart it, it's it, our, our world is very precisely designed like a mercedes mybox sedan every little gear every little switch every little chip micro quantum everything it's engineered so perfectly it's going to be really hard and time consuming to dismantle all this. We've got to go forward working with a lot of these people going, OK, it, it, you know that it's the secrecy isn't working because you and I would be talking Mustangs and Pintos and, and Camaros. It's not working. It never has really worked. But since the advent of the Internet, boy, it's worked like shit. And they keep saying national security. They're trying to outlaw people like you and everyone else and saying these, these amateur researchers are a danger to the American people. They've mentioned that in Congress. That's frightening. I hate to tell you, the people, that's overt fascism. That's, they're not going to try to hide the fascism anymore. They're going to put it out in the open, and they're going to say, what are you going to do about it? And people are going to wave the American flag, you know, and the British people wave their British flags, you know, at the royal family. And it's like, yeah, we rule you. So what? You do that. <laughs> Most people just don't give a shit. They don't care. They want their six pack of beer. They want their, their glass of wine, their piece of cheese. And they want to relax and listen to music like all my friends. They, they don't want to hear what you and I have to say. They want to relax. They want to get on their private jet. They want to go to Monaco or they want to go to Africa. And yeah, but if, if this is all disclosed, I mean, it's got to change some they, people's most perspective. People, I guarantee you most people won't give a flying fuck after the first year. They'll be like, that's great. Champagne up and get drunk, whatever. <laughs> people, can you demand, right. yeah. people can demand, I want anti-gravity air travel free. You can demand free energy uh, free. I want this for free. I want my fucking Tesla for 10 bucks a month. They're not going to give you that because the monetary fiat system or even going to Bitcoin or electronic system, money is slavery. And they're going to keep that going for as long as they can. UFOs, ET, you know, Germans in space, whatever, what have you. It doesn't matter because most people just don't give a shit. And I'm sorry, but most people are like, I don't understand what you're talking about. You know, if it's not well, football, I'm sure most people are busy with real world problems. If it's not the not football winnable. or soccer or you know the movies or celebrity gossip or whatever it is, and they're like, ah, oh, UFOs and aliens, that's great. I talked to some, you know, some of my smartest friends, and I'm like, I'm going to test them. They don't care about it. They're like, I'm sure there's millions of people, you know, billions of people in the, in the universe. Well, so don't you? Don't you think though that that's, tomorrow on Wall Street? Don't you think that one 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 part of history that we might be able to get some perspective with is the discovery of the new world, 
right? When, when, when I'm sure there was rumors, there's this whole other world over there on the other side of the planet and I was we never know wrong. nothing about it, but it like, but, but you know what I mean? Like when, when, when it was discovered and then it was accepted that there's a whole new other world over there, a lot of people probably went, what can that do for me? Right. So maybe if there's disclosure, people, like you said, they'll want free energy. They'll want an anti-gravity car or something. They'll, they'll want, only be interested in it for what it can do for them. Right. right? They'll want a piece of that Thank you, John trade Lyle. in space. They're like, wow, wouldn't it be great if I could be the middleman from you know XYZ Corporation doing business out in the in the solar system with other people, bringing stuff in from you know the galaxy? And I can get a hold of, of the green cubes for sale. Wouldn't that? Wouldn't the Russians? They'll pay me as the middleman. You see, the th the problem is we're geared towards uh, greed and avarice and and all this stuff. Even though most of us, I mean, most human beings are beautiful, loving people. We that's our really who we are inside. I've seen that in the people. I've seen the nastiest people in my youth become the sweetest people in their in their adulthood. I mean. I've seen it firsthand. And so that's who we really are. We're all in this together. Deep state, you know, the royal families, the committee of 300, every single person on this planet, and then the people who are probably living below in cavern cities or in a higher dimensions. doesn't matter. We're all in this shit together. And we've all got to come out of it together. And then this is what I think is starting to happen in dribs and drabs. It's like a secrecy is not working. Stephen Cambion is blowing our cover every week. You know, the secrecy. Well, actually, actually, John, a lot of what I do is show people blown. that a lot of these people with their information are pretty fake, and and a lot of the stuff is pretty fake. But I, honestly, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't still be here if I didn't think that some of it is true. Right, that's the know? problem. That's the problem. Yeah, and, and a lot of that is the intel that have been doing that for years. They they control social media. Now, it's, it's obvious. I would, too, if you put them yourself in their place and put a black cowboy hat on, <laughs> you know, I would do the same thing because that's how you try to control people. But it's not working anymore. The Internet changed the game. They can't destroy the Internet, so they just float more mud out there and muddy the waters. You know, it's but it's the secrecy. Everyone's like, oh, there's no proof of anything. And it's like. What are, where's all that money going to the military industrial intel corporate complex? What's it all for? Why so much secrecy? Why national security? Oh, the Russians, the Chinese, and the Iranians. Are you kidding? China wants to do business with us. They own half the United States. They're Everything buying up real China. estate, too. A lot of people don't know that. They're buying up real estate right. at massive argument, levels right now. The argument for enemies is pathetic. There's no argument. It's hollow. Chris Mellon is out there, oh, our enemies. Maybe he's talking about people in space. We don't know because he's he's very careful and bland with his words. They're very vague. Chris Miller is very vague. So is Elizondo. So is all these UAP task force folks. They're very vague. And they're very simplistic about it all. They're treating the American people and others like children. I take umbrage with that. Other people, you know, I understand they need a softer approach for some people. Fine. But, you know... Our history is blood soaked and barbaric and brutal. What is the big deal if it's happening out there? What is the I don't see the difference. Out there, here, what's the difference? You're talking about 10 miles of atmosphere and you're in space. You're living on a spaceship. That's what everyone in the, in the uh, yeah, bloody universe and cosmos, we all live on moons and planets. And I don't know, maybe there's a dimension, a higher dimension where there's you know grass fields. I don't know. But, you know, we're all living in this cosmos together and we're all going to get start to get along. I mean, whatever the truth is, we're going to have to start coming to grips with, you know, the secrecy is there for a reason. And you know it's not good because history always turns out worse than what they tell us in the books. You're right about always. that. Here's a good point. People are asking, do you think uh, with China point it implies these governments are all in on it? I think they know each other and still don't necessarily like each other yeah you think the governments are in on the secrets the, the yes. higher up the, elites the high and no offense john but your family's one of them god damn yes. it you're from that illuminati bloodline and you guys have the secrets right 
Well, the, 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 the five percent are involved, but they're all at different levels. I guarantee you, you and I know more shit than Chris Mellon does. I think they gave him this much briefing. That's all he gets. You know, everyone is compartmentalized severely. My dad said that. He's like, you don't understand. I, he's like, I have, a, I have a really good security clearance. Most senators don't. They're not trustworthy. Well, my dad was a conservative Republican. You know, he's a team player. You know, this is not conspiracy. You know, governments, we were always cooperating with Russians on the bottom level. Otherwise, nuclear war really would have happened. The generals and admirals and you know, a few of the leaders were fucking around thinking, oh, my God, we're close to a nuclear war. The people in the download, they, they'd call up on the black phone and they were like, shit, you know, Khrushchev, hey, man, everything's cool on our end. Oh, great. It's, everything's cool on our end, too. And they hang up. Come on, this has been going on forever. During World War II, we had Navy spies and other branches of the OSS talking to the Nazis since 42. Yeah, well, that's verifiable okay. fact, yes. It doesn't matter who wins the war. How are we going to make business work? Because business has to keep going. Business during a war accelerates. You know, they were always like, well, the Nazis were like greedy, and they were like, well, we want Argentina, and we want all of South America. And we probably said, okay, well, if you win – maybe but if we win what do we get and this is how the that's how the world is it's, it's done on the down low this really deep down low hence deep state peter you know, one of the things that's so frustrating to me about this like tonight it's not a big deal. About they these. All, the ufo technology on the deeper levels they have to be talking about it because during world war ii and the foo fighters were were active everyone on the deepest diplomatic Remember, the diplomats didn't stay silent during a war. They were always communicating. So the yeah, Japanese, they talk, even though they're Italians, in the middle of the Russian, war. Yeah. The Australians, the, the English, the Americans, the French, and the Polish, whatever. We were, they were all like, what is going on with these Foo Fighters? And the mystics. That's verifiable fact that like, many countries were seeing them and talk. Yeah. Those things are probes. And but you, you know what's frustrating world. to me, John, is that like tonight we're talking about human mutilations and we're talking about crash retrievals. And it's it does seem to me that what we get is a lot of tantalizing maybe proof or witness testimony that sometimes the witnesses we can't it's really trust. Somebody's in the live chat saying, is there any proof of human mutilations or crash retrievals? Not that I know of. Any solid real proof no uh, you know chris mellon mentions it do you, do you take his word i don't know he's not he's a former official and spy and a spook and a dia guy okay is he have more credibility than anyone else in the disclosure arena not in my book well he just took he just took he pictures left. with him with that nazi girl so uh, yeah his credibility is not yeah, you know, <laughs> not so good. Everyone's looking for proof when the proof is all around you. It's just how, what is what is the definition of solid proof? Oh, the the U.S. Senate said so. The judge said so in court. How do you know the judge wasn't on the take? How do you know all those idiot senators and congressmen knew what they were doing? You don't. You can't find solid proof that even we exist. This is all somebody's dream. Well, that, that that's that's a scary thought. Maybe Power you're right. Universe, yeah. Electric universe consciousness. You know, people believe in this simulation theory. You know, there might be something to that. But it's like everyone's going. Around, I want hard proof. What is hard proof? You define it for me. Who is the who is the governing body that says this is a real Rodin sculpture? We say so. Is that and everyone's like, oh, well, they're officials. I guess it's proof that it's real. No, it's not. Look at the art world, Stephen. There's fakes of everything. You're everything. right. That much I know. So sure. good it fools the best experts in the world. There was a German yeah. couple who were so good at painting that they faked so many brilliant works of art and they fooled the best minds. Yeah, people have faked Picassos and things like that and sold them for lots of money. So, and only later did we find out that they were fake. So, yeah. You have but to I would think I would think the shadow. proof would be I would think that the proof would be, you know, sometimes I'm a science and data guy. Like if they do have alien crash retrieval craft, then we should be able to analyze the metal show us. and show that it didn't come from our solar system. That would be proof to me. 
Yeah. And people but, have claimed that they have that, but never actually provided that. You who know, are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the U.S. Air Force or the Navy? If they yeah. Shoot? And this is the other problem that's so problematic the Navy for me. might believe it, but what about the 10, 5% at the top? They're like, ha, ha, ha. That's just really a couple of Volkswagens we repainted. Yeah. And for 70 years, though. Who knows? The, who knows the whole story was the anything. government's covering this up. The government's covering this up. The government's covering it up. And since 2016, a whole bunch of people jumped on board with this TTSA narrative when a bunch of spooks, no offense to your cousin, uh, 100 or is it 150 years total combined CIA experience yeah. on the TTSA the board was going to tell us the truth about aliens. It didn't make any sense to me then. No. It still doesn't make any sense to me now. But because somehow we're supposed to believe Elizondo is more credible because he worked on the inside. And your cousin, oh, wow. Chris Mellon, is, we're supposed to believe because he worked on the inside. But they don't tell us anything that's not already public domain. Right. Except for those three videos that largely prove nothing. So th this is what tr frustrates me, because every time I go, that's it, I'm out. And then a few little breadcrumbs come along, like their side likes to call it. And, and it keeps people interested enough to keep going down this damn rabbit hole. Right. You know? which, which is my theory that they're poking sticks at the disclosure movement. We can't disclose much. You guys do it. We can't disclose much. You guys do it. And they keep doing this bullshit, and it's like, wouldn't it make everyone really suspicious and angry if a bunch of spooks came out and said, we're going to give you disclosure? I would say that's not a bad idea. It stimulated everyone. I never would have come forward had it not been for my fucking cousin out there shooting his mouth off. <laughs> <and why? laughs> it's all his fault, John. Yeah. No, he thinks he's doing God's work. He probably believes in God, and he, he probably thinks, you know, Oh, this is best for the nation. He's a patrician conservative guy. I, I swear to God, he wears a tie with his pajamas to bed. <laughs> I mean, he is pretty conservative looking. Yeah. Unbelievable nerd. I'm not faulting him for that. That's just the way he is. It's the way he's wired. I'm wired differently. You know, I, I've been calling scams like you have since my high school days. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. This is a scam. And I'm like, my dad would go, oh, you're so cynical, Warner. God damn it. You're so damn cynical. And then two years later, I found out I was proven right. And he's like, God damn it, you were right. You know, over and over and over again, it's, 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 we're trying to figure out our reality. What is the truth of our reality? It's not what they've told us in the history books. We know that. So what is it? You know, what is all this secrecy, all these wars, all this horrible stuff? What is it all for? What is all this cover up for? You have to ask yourselves that. You know, it's like the just you know the UFO ET historical deep state you know, everything question issue. It's the biggest, most dynamic, most interesting issue in human history. Who we are, where we came from, where we're going, how did we get here? Who died? What have we traded for technology? What is technology doing for us, Elon Musk? You know, I mean, my wife and I went to look at a car a new car for sale and it had the screen and everything in it. It was so fucking complicated. And I said, I'm not, we're not going to buy it. She's like, I don't want to have to deal with it on the road. It's, it's giant computers and you know, the Mercedes, they're trying to kill you in a, in a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too much. All this I took a ride in a Tesla and John, I never knew until recently that the screen was that big in a Tesla. Yeah. And what if the you could watch a movie down? while you're driving and kill yourself easily? Right. I think, yeah, it was surprising so, to me and everything was computerized. Everything in the car. Yeah, everything is I getting like that. severely technical. Now, I'm a techie yeah. guy. I can figure anything out, but it's like, I don't want to do that on the fucking road. You know, I get in my old Cadillac, a 64 Cadillac, and it's got none of that shit. You turn the key in, you start up, it's got gas, you go. You know, there's none of this old call coming in from Venus. You know, and you know what I liked? Oh, I you know what I liked, John? I liked old cars with carburetors that you could work on yourself. Now... If, if, you know, like I have some stupid thing going on in my car with like the light, the, the, it, they, they just overcomplicate everything. I have sensors in the valve stem of my car that tell the car whether the, whether the air is low in the tires. And those yeah. sensors cost like a hundred bucks a piece and two of them went out. So I just have the light on that my, <laughs> that my air, that my tires need air forever because I don't well, want to pay the 300 bucks to fix the sensors. It's so stupid. 
Ray you know? Elizondo going down the road. It, okay, technology. It, it It's great for young folks. You know, all this technology, some of it's very interesting. I use a smartphone. Oh my gosh, it is distracting us from the road, from driving. You know, everyone's diddling on their phone all the time while driving. You know, oh yeah. I mean, not only are people going to die in droves, but they're distracting us from the really important things in life. Your family, you know, your loved ones, your, mm -hmm. your who you are, how you treat your body, uh, you know, the stress of your job. You know, I, you know, I had a couple. Well, that's another life. reason why. You know, it's like. Everything That's another reason why you and me are, are friendly because you also agree that the the the, the noise is too much that they're pumping at us and and you like me like to turn off everything and go out to some cabin right. in the in woods nature. go hunting go fishing do things in the real world we're getting lost in this artificial reality that it's it's a construct yeah I mean I have to pull my wife away from the city and, and her computer and my computer and I said look let's we got to go down to the farm and, you know, yes, we have to check our email and everything like that, but that's it, you know, and we do that, but it's hard. Sometimes she gets in a groove with her work, you know, and it, it's Me like, too, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I get to writing, I can't stop, but you have to force yourself to do that. And so many people are turning away from that. I mean, I hope young people are seeing that they need the nature and the green space. They want everything to be green, but it's like, they driving a tesla is not green the batteries are dirty i'm sorry the lithium batteries catch fire uh, they'll have new well, ones not to mention there's child slave labor mining yeah, all digging, that lithium that's a all problematic that john rare earth <laughs> it's it's not a solution the technology is not going to get us out of this problem it can help us get out certain technologies like zero point energy they're already talking about they already cracked fusion they said so in california some company you know, they're, they're getting cold right fusion. It. I believe cold fusion. There's so much investment in it right now. And there's like 10 different companies trying to right. race to call, it. Oh, you can call zero point cold fusion if you want. The thing is, cold fusion is more dangerous from what I've been told by certain physicists. They're like zero points a lot safer than fusion. But both will come out. Now we have our green energy for, for what we need it for our cars and everything like that. What worries me is, you know, it's like from 1825 to the present day, the technology curve is like that. Now, that's unprecedented in our human history. You're right. We've come along. We've, we went from horse and Unbelievable. buggies. Unbelievable. And we went it, from horse and buggies to here in 150 years or right. less. So I talked to the moon. Right. And, and I traveled I to the moon and back. Students, I, there's Georgetown, George Washington University is up here. And I talked to some young people. I said, I'm a writer and a researcher. What do you think of Elon Musk and all this technology? And they had mixed answers. You know, some were worried about the technology, but then, you know, diddle, diddle, you know, there's text coming in from the. I want to create a new app to help people. And I'm like, do you really think an app is really going to help people in the world? And they're like, well, I'd like to help people, but technology will help us. And I, I said, what about free energy and, you know, what about all this UFOs in the news? And they're like, yeah, I heard something, but I don't know. So I, I fear that young people are, I mean, I was disconnected as a college student. I was an idiot. But, you know, I at least I was still reading a UFO book here and there and sort of keeping it on the burner. I didn't have. good pilot but you know the world loved him and until he he made the h1 spruce goose and congress lambasted him he was still yeah. this hero and then he became a military contractor hughes aerospace 
And everyone said he went insane. He was a heroin addict because of his various injuries, which may have been true. Um, but um, he was this guy that was beloved by millions, millions of people. Howard Hughes is going to save the world and revolutionize air travel. Well, he did to a degree, you know, with the certain aircraft that he developed. But it, what, that's not saving the world. That's making profits for airline companies and fuel companies. And Pratt and Whitney, you know, and, and right cyclone engines, you know, do the math before everyone says he's like, <laughs> the future. It's like the DIA or the, the men in black. What he's doing, and not a lot of it is progressive. He says he's going to build a sustainable house that only costs 100 grand. And I thought, that's a really good idea. Let me dig into it. And I dug into it. And of course, somebody has already done that. 100 grand. You can't. Oh, oh, it's impossible, you think? Uh, no. They'll do it. It's just, I think it's 150 grand. It's more like 200 for 100 square feet or something. He was trying to do something like that, which was a progressive idea. I want to know what happened to it if it's really coming forward because he seems to come out with this robot recently. What the fuck is that all about? Nobody needs a robot. I'm a, I'm a big a fan of robots, so John. So but I the like Japanese that. Japanese guys with, I, with the yeah. synthetic uh, women, you know, made out of latex. I mean, that's really scary. There are people in Japan, guys in Japan, so lonely. Married to them, yeah. Married to them. Now that's not funny anymore. That's really, really strange. Something horrible is happening with Japanese people. I'm very worried about young people. They're stop having sex. From what I can gather, it's Japan is a test bed for future society, I think, in my opinion. And it's very frightening. Um, and don't get me started with that Hello Kitty shit. You know, that was all mind programming. You could dig that out on your own, folks. Look into the Hello Kitty. <laughs> That's I'm a whole other conspiracy there. for a whole other night. Yeah, you yes. can feel that on your own, but there's something weird about it. And I had a friend who was from Australia, and she was all into that Hello Kitty stuff. And then she's like, all of a sudden, it started getting weird for her. And she said, I burned all my stuff and got rid of it and I won't allow my kids to have it. But Japan is an interesting case. People should dig into Japan that they're overworked. Uh, they have little times for their families. Uh, sex is on the downswing. Everyone is depressed and suicidal. A lot of people are, not everyone. But um, I always say that, it's a slip of the tongue. Um, but it's very disturbing, the trends. And in this country, America, everyone's like, oh, no, you know, Americans. Well, in the big cities, you know, a lot of people are getting institutionalized. They always have been big cities. They, they, it's like a prison institutionalizes you. I saw it when my years in Manhattan. It's the death of the soul. Everyone's I like, was oh, in Philly well, forever, and I, I will the, never the go back. The jazz music, the arts, the blues music, I loved it all. The bars, the fun, the nightclubs, I loved it all. But I had to get out of there. It was the death of the soul. My friends were like, why are you leaving? I was working in television 12 hours a day. I was like, fuck this. I'm doing the night shift. I'm a compositor on a computer. I'm, I'm, I'm just a slave in a cubicle. I did that for years. In between my racing driving, I, I worked in television, post-production. And I saw the whole cast system in that, too. And, and you know, uh, it's disgusting. And, and you know, I, I would get home at, at uh, 5 in the morning in New York, and I'd walk through Central Park, and it was just dead and, and I, I just felt like everyone's soul was slowly dying in Manhattan. <laughs> I felt I like similar. I lived in I lived in Philadelphia and worked in a cubicle for 20 years, John. And if yeah. I, I wish the it, I always try to live my life to have no regrets. One of my regrets is that I didn't jump out of that cubicle the first day I got in one. You know, I should have just said the fir very first day I should have said humans aren't meant to do this. This is unacceptable. I'm not doing this for 12 hours a day for the, for the rest of my life. Luckily, I got out when I did. I, I got, you know, I was very successful, John, though, in, in the corporate world at one thing, getting fired because yeah, eventually the animosity yeah. would build up and I would just lose my shit one day and say something. And you know how corporations are. You can't even speak out of turn or, or point no, out the obvious bullshit. very satisfied <laughs> and they should be um there's a there's a, a a couple of netflix series that deal with high-tech companies and weirdness i mean it's our society is engineered I, I forget the rest of the world I'll just talk about america america's engineered so carefully and 
you know, they, they get you on a track. In the 1950s, they came out with a movie, The Man in the Gray Flannel Suit. And it was about the World War II generation that stayed silent, but it showed you how mindless and conform, conform related it was. He was going from one company to another and he had to wear, everyone wore a gray flannel suit. It's a uniform. <laughs> And whether you're in the military or, you know, it's it's mostly drudgery. And even researching and, and a lot of my writing sometimes is drudgery. It's, it's you know, I've worked in, I worked 12 hour days in television. It was drudgery. And one guy said, what are you doing? You dumb asshole. You're a panel beater. Go do something on your own. Use your fucking brain and your creativity. You're just sitting there. You know, for years I worked, you know, on a computer system in, in a cubicle. You know, and I had my own office, but it was basically a cube, a 12 by 12. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 10 by 10. You know. yeah, no, 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 Jim, Whatever. when I you mean, get a promotion, they give you a slightly bigger cube and call yeah, it an office. The corner yeah. office. You're a good little debt slave. You get the corner office. You know, I, I was lucky to have a wealth so that I could detach, uh, attach and detach multiple times from the workaday world. And, um, you know, my dad, he wouldn't let me sit on my ass. And, and I wanted to work. I, I enjoyed working hard. I think a lot of people. Yeah, I was going to ask though, the, the, but I thought it might be rude, John, if I said you, your family was so wealthy, you didn't have to work. You could no, just... I have cousins and, and, and family members who never worked a day in their lives. I didn't want to be that person. Wow. I don't, I'm not pointing fingers, but I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to be, you know, have jobs. I be productive, right? You need I to be productive. A dealership selling cars in my twenties. I worked at a Ford dealership. I mean, I wanted to learn about cars and how the deals are done, but I, I wanted to work. I, my dad's like, what are you doing? And I said, I want to earn a paycheck like a regular person. You know, God damn it. He respected that. Uh, he wanted me to work on Capitol Hill. I said, no, I'll do anything else. I, I went to grad school in New York. But it's like, if you're gonna if you're going to be a writer or a commentator, you've got to see the world and experience it at different levels. Now, I'm, I've never been to prison. I've never dug ditches. You know, I've never worked on, I've worked by the highway. <laughs> John, I had a I job. Speeding and I did. Um, I had know, a job digging service. ditches for a you while. Know, I've been out there with the ex con. <laughs> you, know, you know what's so funny, John, is. And I've worked right after, in, a, in a mission for the homeless. I and got that, fired and then I, I got fired from corporate cubicle land and then I ended up at a job where I, honest to God, that was basically my job was to dig ditches for an exterminator company. You know, they, yeah, they, they have to do that. To know. But I loved it. I said, this is better than a cubicle. I'll dig ditches in a thunderstorm. I don't care, you know? Well, being outside, I think, is better work. <laughs> yeah. Being out in yeah. nature, out inside, even if it's hard work, construction. I, I worked at a boatyard for two summers, and I did heavy construction work outside. But at least you're outside. Um, no, from those days on, I mean, I... I, I I got a horrible speeding ticket. It was a dumb thing to do. I was speeding in the city. I drag raced some guy over a bridge. And I, won. <laughs> and I got caught by the embassy cops, D.C. embassy cops. And the judge said, you, know, you son of a bitch. You know, I'm going to make you work alongside the highway. And then you're going to work for uh, the homeless. And I said, well, my best friend's mother runs a mission in D.C. I'll work there. And he said, that's fine. And I did. That. Oh, so you got community service? I did. And it was very, very valuable, actually. I, I, I stayed on for a while. And I wrote resumes for homeless people. And I saw the futility of people at the bottom. And this, this guy's like, how am I going to get a job? All I've done is worked at McDonald's. And he's like, how am I going to get a job? And I had no answers for him. And this was 2007. And I had been through back surgeries and, or I was going through back surgeries. And I said, God damn it. I'm going to figure out the rest of the world come hell or high water. There's got to be an answer to all this. And I found it. It's all wrapped up in the deep state. It's all wrapped up in how the world is engineered, the caste systems of the world and how people have, even in America, the land of the plenty. And it's all bullshit. The American dream is bullshit. They knew that in the, in the late sixties, it was all bullshit. Uh, when the when the guys went to Vietnam and the poor guys went to Vietnam and then the ins the guys went and started selling uh, bonds and insurance life insurance to the wives at home 
and all these scams. You know, people know this history of the, the, the Vietnam War and the civil rights and all that stuff. It showed that they were really in starting to engineer society very carefully. Yeah, and there's a rich ruling class that that they no more have control. The middle class guy, even you know, all races in the middle class in the fifties, they were moving on up. You know, they put an end to that shit. And now they've had an outright war on the middle class. I agree with you on that point. It seems them. like now, now they really just want the the, the rich right. ruling class because and that the poor was the, slaves. There's nothing in the middle anymore. Right. That was know? the heart of America. It was our strong middle class. The rest of the world couldn't believe it. The standard of living we had in after World War II for 30 years, the standard of living until the first recession in the late 70s, that killed everyone. And I think they had they they were worried about people, you know, making a utopia. We were on our way to making a utopian United States. Wouldn't have been easy, but in a hundred years we would have gotten it done. No, they derailed that big time, big time. And now well, they're going to selfish. They're going to charge us for it. It's definitely it's there's a selfish point. ruling class. It's more for me and less for thee. They they don't yeah. want us to to be. We used to have that all, upward mobility. It doesn't it's feel the, like the it's there anymore. Do. Yeah. yeah, the top ten percent of the world's wealthy elite, you know, they're scumbags. Some would say twenty percent. The five percent are read in on the deep state stuff, but the twenty percent, yeah, they're pretty selfish. And um, you know, it, it's. It can't well, that's matter. why you're the black sheep of your family, of though. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> you mean, talk you about these you things. The what? I have never, I have never, besides you, that's one of the reasons why I have, uh, you and I have a good relationship, because I just think it's funny that you're from one of the richest, most wealthy families in the world, and you tell everybody, this is the truth of what, this is the way it works, and I'm, I'm only, sure don't don't the rich people get pissed off at you, John, for being well, most like, of them so, don't know what we're talking about. They wouldn't understand. Okay, like, but the, if they knew, they they'd be they pissed off. Like like John, like shut up! No, You're gonna care. wake up too many people. You know nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares because they know that 99 percent of the world, Stephen, is not going to wake up to this anytime soon. They won't understand yeah. it, and, and that, I don't say that to be mean. It's just the damn truth. I'll be generous. The two percent of the world might be able to understand the reality of what's going on, but they don't. I mean, there, there's probably five million people around the world, deep state included, who really, really wrap their heads around this whole thing of human history, our whole deal. That's not many out of seven point seven billion. So no one cares that John Warner or Leo Zagami. He's another. You know, from an Italian wealthy Illuminati family. Yeah, I've, I've, I've listened to him too. There's yeah. another woman, uh, Rothschild. She did a couple of interviews. I don't know what happened to her, but she did come forward and said, "Fuck yeah!" I mean, you people got to figure out the occult because we use it all the time. And you know, those horrible things are real. You know, I forget her name, but I, you can look I, up I know her. Yeah, I've heard of her interview. too. Yeah, there's been a couple of wealthy elite people. I, there would be more that came forward, but you have to remember there's a small amount of the 1% around the world. Only maybe 5 to 10% of that 1% understands what you and I are talking about or anything. And so that's a very, very small pool to, to, to have people come forward from. Very small. You know, I mean, I could go to my family reunion in, in Pennsylvania the next time. It's only going to be Chris and I. I mean, my sister understands. Uh -huh. You should invite me, John. I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'd you know. like to. That'd I'd like be to. Awesome. Then you I know, could get my picture with the Chris rest Mellon. of them. Are completely <laughs> gone. They're just they're nice people, but they they're like, oh, I I just own a lumber company and my kids go to school and you know, I don't care about that UFO stuff. That's you and Chris. You're the you're the black sheep of the family. You know, they call us the black sheep of the family. That's crazy. There's only about 130 melons alive at any given time. And we're small. But, you know, around the world, there are, I think, I think Prince Harry of the British royal family, he said some, I don't know about UFOs per se, but he did try to come forward with some information. I think he's, he, they, obviously the two boys know their mother was murdered by MI5. That's the story. MI5 killed them. You know, Diana was carrying uh, Dodie's baby and they didn't want you know, the bloodlines to you know, Diana was of the bloodline. I mean, they take that seriously. Um, 
everyone's like, oh, you know, Anunnaki bloodlines. Well, we're all Anunnaki ET bloodlines. Come on, folks. We got 12 strands of DNA. Apparently, that's unique in the cosmos. So, pointing at the elites and saying, oh, they're the weird bloodlines, it's like we're all, every single one of us in the cosmos has weird, funky, weird genetic bloodlines. Now, these royal families might have a higher percentage of Anunnaki DNA. Whoopity doo, da, da. You know, in the old days, they wore gold crowns with jewels for psionic power enhancement because they were losing through generations their psionic and telekinesis abilities. That makes sense. You always see the medieval paintings with the halo. Well, that's higher consciousness, higher knowledge, the crown of higher knowledge. It's on all the symbols. You see two lions with a crown. It's like two lions <laughs> to overcome to get to the crown of higher knowledge. And today, that's the... The deep state, it's, it's mostly not the deep state anymore. It's just people's ignorance. Those are the two lions that are preventing us from the crown of high knowledge. And it's not people's really their fault. We've been engineered with shit schools, shit information, shit history. And we're all going to we're all going to benefit. And we all feel the, the, the negativity of it, whether you're deep state, elite, rich, poor, black or white or not. We're all living on this little blue ball. Everyone's like, well, us versus them. Well, okay, let's have a big war. What's that gonna, what's that gonna do? We're gonna have to reach across the aisle and shake hands at some point. Because Yeah, I don't know if you if that'll ever happen though. I don't know. We either. seem to be the most divided as that we've ever been. We are the most divided we've ever been around the world. There's no doubt about it. And it's it's heartbreaking. But it's gonna come to a head and blow up to some degree. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but there's going to have to come, uh, you know, an Armageddon, whether it's mild or wild. I hope it's mild, but you know, it's, it, our history is very violent and bloody. You know, I don't think they're going to use big nudes. I don't think they're can use the big nukes. I think they're useless, but they can kill a lot of people. They don't need nukes anymore to kill people on mass. Oh no, 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 no. But remember, one person said to me, a uh, metaphysical person, and said, you know, there's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Everyone has a soul. Um, there might be a metaphysical reason for having so many people alive at this given time. And that is to raise us up out of this mess. Because even if your soul, even if you're a Hitler or a Mussolini or a Stalin or horrible person you still got a soul you're not going to be an evil person forever in every single lifetime incarnation you could be a nurse the next life hitler's probably you know, a nurse you know i mean that's how the, the weirdness you know it, it's to learn the meaning of life is to learn and then you know help others in the universe we're going to be good at that if we can overcome this really really bad period of time that we're in we've got to do it you know, for our kids and grandkids' sake, everyone's like, oh. well, we're going to have to do something. The, the, you can't keep going on oil and you can't do all this shit. They're going to move us on to free energy. They'll charge us for it at first, but hopefully over time, they'll whittle that down. It'll never be utopia. No, I don't think utopia is really a good thing. But more utopian-like is what we need, a lot less violence. In other words, the yin and yang symbol is all about balance of energies in the cosmos. And right now we're way off to the negative. We well, need to, that I, we need to be I'm in the a real big believer in balance and yin and yang. And yeah, yeah. everyone has duality in them. Even the nicest, sweetest people in the world, you get them starving and, 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 and the wolves are coming after them. They're going to pick up a stick or a gun and kill a wolf or a person to survive. It's, it's our instincts. Duality is, is, Everyone thinks, oh, I got to get rid of my negative side and raise my vibration. It's like, well, yeah, fine, but don't raise it too much. With you know, a lot of this new age religion stuff is just too much positivity. It's toxic positivity because then you're balanced to the other way. Yeah, and that's gotta, not good. It can't be. You need to be, be in the middle. That's what way. this means. You know, namaste, namaste, balance. This is balance. This is a symbol for balance, equal pressure, balance point. The universe and the cosmos craves balance. It's like an engine. If the parts aren't balanced, the cylinders and the crankshaft and everything, the engine's not going to run right. 
Our engine's not running right. It hasn't run right for 12,000 years because there's greedy people and there's some probably some bad ETs in the mix. And it, it's a mess. It's, it's the biggest mess probably out there in our galaxy. I guarantee it's the worst neighborhood. And so we've got to bring back the balance point. How we're going to do that, I don't know, but we got to do it. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned that you're going to have a new book coming out. When is that coming out? Uh, soon. I, I showed you the cover for it. I've got a, it's finished. I've just got to get it uh, printed up and on Amazon and all that jazz. A couple months. A couple um, of months. So you'll have another book in a couple of months. That's yeah. good news. And it, it, it it's an interesting and it's short. It's two twenty two 225 pages because I know my books are long. That's short for you, isn't it? It is. <laughs> no offense. I'm surprised. <laughs> what it was. But I didn't want to make it longer. It just the story is perfect as is. My wife says, "My God, don't touch it. It's perfect the way it is. It's fast paced. It, it, it's it's it moves really fast." I kind of like those quick read books sometimes. You know, when you don't want anything that's going to take you a month to get through. Well, it's based on my other books. It's a sequel, so it you have to kind of have knowledge of the other books. And this but is going to be on Amazon, it, like your other books, right? Yeah, you can read it standalone, and it's still you know very entertaining. And I, I well, go maybe in, we could have you come oh, back when you get the book out, and I get a chance to read it. Would you be? Would you do that for us? Yeah, yeah, excellent. So that is something that I will look forward to. Great. So well, I got to go to bed, man. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. We went, we went, we went over time actually, and I didn't even realize it because because uh, no, it's interesting. It, it's interesting stuff. Yeah, you and I always have interesting conversations, and I'm glad that I can bring uh, everybody along for it instead of just doing it off air. And uh, you know, over overwhelmingly positive uh, you, when you and I have a conversation. But since you're Mr. Controversy, some people are gonna not like. Uh, I cool. don't know. I didn't yell at you enough, John. Maybe I should just yell at you right here at the end. Come back with more evidence and proof but next time. Discussion so. and, and controversy and, and arguments, but but this is all good because it's dynamic. Yes, got, I agree. The worst thing for disclosure would be that everyone's like, mm, okay, you know, and nothing. You know, we need we need the dynamic movement of it forward. It's it's not perfect. It's it's a lot of arguing and people pointing fingers and, you know, you and I are critical of others and it's fine, but it, it's like, got to move this narrative forward because kids and grandkids, folks, I'm sorry. If there's young people watching this, and they've got their whole life ahead of you. you know, what kind of life do you want to live? Um, I agree with you. Yeah, I want to change America. Right I'm sorry. I want to change everything. I, you know, it's funny. You're right. Somebody once told me this when, when you're young, you want to change yourself when you have children, you start wanting to change the world because you worry about the world that you're leaving for your children, your grandchildren. And yeah. The, yeah. I'm at that point now where I'm like, I can't believe they're screwing everything up. What are my kids going to be like when, when they're my yeah. age? What's the world going to be like? It's, it's Well, there are thoughts. some young people who are trying to change the world. They always have been since the 60s. I mean, the 50s, really. Uh, they started, the young people were like, shit, this is not right. There's something wrong going on. The 60s blew everything apart. We've never, they've tried to put the toothpaste back in, back in the tube since the 60s. No way. They tried. They got a lot of it back in the tube, but not all of it. The 60s generation really did a solid service. Civil rights, everything, you know, uh, to the world. And a lot of metaphysical people believe that we almost broke away from our whole, you know, metaphysical control system, mind control system. Which is in play, but it's it's breaking down. Otherwise, there'd be no disclosure movement. There'd be no discussion. You know, I mean, even in Nazi Germany, at the height of the power of the Nazis, there were still groups of and people trying to kill Hitler. And you know, that's the yeah. human spirit. We don't like this. We need to change it. That's the human spirit. No one can get rid of that. They could try, but it's not going to work. You know. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, it was fun catching up with you. I want to yeah, thank you again for my kids. Uh, they they loved your gift, and I want to thank you. Uh, and you know, I had to try to explain to them and my wife what this package was. And I'm like, that's just uh, John William Warner, the billionaire. His, his family's the Mellons, and my wife is in finance. She knew right away who you were, or or you know the Mellon Bank, and all. She goes, 
That's his family? And I go, yeah. And she goes, wait, somebody from the Mellon Warner family sending my kids gifts now? I go, I, I don't know. Like, you know, it was funny, though. What am I going to say? <laughs> Freeze-dried green juice? I mean, come on. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, the kids. I love Well, it's a great green. gift, though, because kids are like, astronauts eat this? This yeah. is awesome, Dad. You know, well, they're the fun. space station. They probably still do the secret space program on Venus. They're eating freeze dried ice cream. Yeah, it's no, they have replicators because somebody yeah. who was telling those stories watched Star Trek the week before a talk. So, but you, where was Gene have... Roddenberry getting? <laughs> <laughs> well, That's listen, John... story. We could do a whole Star Trek story one day because I'm a real Star Trek fan. Me too. Have you watched this Brave New Worlds? I think it's great. I, did. I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was great. I think it's 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 good Star Trek. You know, I didn't I didn't like Discovery so much, but this one was seemed like getting back to the roots of Star Trek. Like it good did. Cast it, it, and, it's an homage to the original, and it, it's a really good. I thought they did a great job. You know, I mean, I'm too old to really enjoy it, but I, I'm a Star <laughs> Trek fan because Gene Roddenberry really wanted to change the world. I mean, he really did. I met him in college. I, he did. A, he screened one of his pilots. I was in 1981. I met him. And oh, that's like, awesome! They're, yeah, they're morality plays. He said we're we're really trying to get messages across in television. And back then, it was real risque. NBC was all over our ass. No, but if you think about it, like Star Trek: The Next Generation was a lot of morality plays too, like yes, the morality I mean, of of data. They're is he attacking a is he injustice, not? racism, yeah. slavery. Uh, they're mm -hmm. attacking these things in a in a guise of science fiction. Science fiction, but I don't believe in science fiction. I think it's all differing levels. Well, a lot of it comes true. Look at the iPad that was on Star Trek in 1988. We're so. all using communicate. Our our cell phones are more. Yeah, dangerous. we had the flip phone and everything for a while. <laughs> we have medical scanners that are handheld. Look That's at the Enar device. Yeah, That's I, I love your alien tech too. I love Star Trek stuff. Well, I'm going to let you go, and uh, you know, thank you for doing the extra time as well because yeah. uh, everything that we covered tonight, it's hard to cram it in everything into two hours. And I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. We're getting a lot of great feedback. Please don't be a stranger and come back soon, John. You're always Thanks, welcome here. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Warner. So there we have it, friends. Uh, and again, for anybody who was critical, like, you know, uh, I, I told you that this was just a conversation and uh, I'm, you know, everybody had a good time. And that's what we're here to do, as well as expand your horizons, think about new things, uh, you know, explore possibilities. And that's what I get to when I talk to John. And certainly he's into a lot of the wild and crazy side of things that I don't delve into. But we have other things in common and things we do agree on. And uh, I, I just think he's an interesting and amazing individual. And if you get a chance, really, I, I tend to be a student of history. Look into John's family, specifically his father, and all of the amazing historical I, I don't even know how to explain it. Just look into his family and all of the history that his family was directly involved in. His his father is an amazing individual and uh, not mentioned tonight, but John Warner's stepmother for a time was uh, Elizabeth Taylor. That's crazy. Uh, uh, just an interesting guy. And we like interesting and controversial people here. And I'll never apologize for talking to any of those interesting people on air. So we're going to bounce on out of here. Went way over time tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a final note, I know that some people may have tuned in tonight looking to uh, hear the latest drama-rama of uh, this show host or that or whatever. But And maybe I'll talk about that Um you know, here's what I will say. Some people have lied and said I said things but never proved it. When I say that somebody that we have proof and evidence here of, of lies that people have said about me, and is it worth arguing with people? Here's what I will say. <clears throat> Can anybody... Listen, anybody that thinks that anybody that works with or for third phase of moon is credible, I really probably don't want to argue with them. 
because that's a ridiculous statement in and of itself. You cannot be credible at all and work with or for third phase moon. That's my opinion. Now, you heard me talk to John tonight. He's friends with Stephen Greer, and I think Stephen Greer's less than credible, uh, to put it mildly. But he and I can agree to disagree on things like some people can do. I can't agree to disagree with other people who lie through their teeth, who lie about me, who lie to their audiences constantly. And I mean, you know, I've already made a video about that guy like 10 times he lied about me and he never addressed or showed proof that he didn't lie about me. So there's 10 times he lied about me. Then let's see. Third phase of moon has not faked anything in five years. We've shown three times they fake things recently. He hasn't addressed that. Instead of doing that, he's going to make up stories about me, which are ridiculous. And, uh, you know, he's he's re and another proof that the guy lied, because the thing that he was talking about was like a goof or a comedy thing. Like it was supposed to be like, you know, those wrestling videos where wrestling guys will like talk crap on each other because they're having a beef. And that happened right after he cried about me getting um, first dibs on the Who's Lou documentary and Area 503 came here first and he started crying and complaining about it. So I thought it'd be funny to make like a goof. Uh, it was a comedy bit. If that's all this guy's got, it's amazing. That's all you got, bro. That's all you got? Me talking about making a spoof video of us having a fight? Uh, no. And does it make any sense to anybody that I would suggest to him, let's have a fake fight after he told people that I may have pedo friends and I may indeed be a pedo myself, that, or that might make me a pedo. That's how it was worded. Or why would I want to have a fake fight with somebody who was doing those things and lying about me and putting me on blast? All I did was say the third phase of moon fakes things. That's all I did. I say they fake things. He lost his mind the next day, put me on blast. That's why we stopped talking. That and suggesting I may have pedo friends and that may make me a pedophile and also making a video mocking my disability. Uh, why would I suggest to him after that, you know, apparently we were still talking after he did all that, but the thing that he's telling people broke the camel's back for him, the straw was me saying, let's have a fake argument or make a video about a fake argument to get views. That's absolutely ridiculous. Why would I want to get in a fake argument with somebody who just got in a real argument with me? It doesn't make any sense. But logic makes, he doesn't need logic. All he needs is to lie just enough to his audience members to muddy the waters and make them forget. Here is the point. Rich Gufan said, Third phase of moon hasn't faked anything in five years. We showed conclusive evidence and proof that they just faked three videos recently. He said, if third phase of moon, if people proved that they made any faked anything, I just couldn't associate with them. We proved that they faked three things recently. He's still associating with them. He's not a man of his word. And you know that old saying, don't argue with an idiot. He'll beat you with experience. Rich just keeps on lying through his teeth. We have the facts and the evidence. And that's another thing. Now he's telling people that I said he's a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer. Show me the clip, Rich. I never said that. I said he was going to host a Nazi. He was going to host a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, that I did say. Uh, but I never directly called him a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer. I said he's going to defend a Nazi sympathizer. Sure. Language is important. And he's over there talking about how people twist things around. Hey, dummy, I have clips of all the things that I'm telling people you say. And I can play them if you want to keep this up. You want to keep lying to your audience and make me prove that you keep lying to your audience? Keep lying and keep lying about me. I have the clips of you saying third phase of moon hasn't faked anything in five years. I have the clips of you saying if third face, if somebody proved third face faked anything recently, I just couldn't associate with them. I have those clips, Rich. You don't have clips of all the shit that you're saying I said that I never said. 
I have a video on the channel if anybody's interested. Ten times rich from Goofon lied about me. Now I can make another ten times rich from Goofon lied about me. And I have the facts. I have the evidence. I have all the receipts. I have the clips, Rich. You're looking foolish. And by the way, that cover story that he's telling about this, you know, uh, I, I wanted to have a fake fight. That happened six or eight months before we stopped talking. And I can prove that, Rich. So you might want to apologize to your audience for lying to them. And if you don't, all bets are off. I can prove when that exchange took place, Rich. Can you? That's not when we stopped talking. In fact, I was on your show after that exchange happened and we were friendly, which proves that you are right now continuing to lie to your audience because you have no other play. He's got no other play, friends. He can't answer for the fact that he keeps lying to his audience. And we keep catching him lying to his audience more to try to cover the previous times he lied to his audience. And now he is going to help this Marina Saren girl defend her honor because she didn't do anything wrong. According to him, she didn't do anything wrong. And I think it's beautiful because lazy rambling rich did not do five minutes of research. Did you know he barely knew that girl's name or how to say her name? You can hear him on the show. What's her name? What's her name? Mar Mar Maria? Oh no, Marina. He barely knows her name. He did no research into her or what she's been saying, what she's been doing, the Nazi earrings she's been wearing, the SS earrings, by the way, Rich. Good, good. You're going to platform her and you're going to help defend her honor. He's simping for a Nazi sympathizer. Great. That'll really help your numbers, Rich. And there's more lies. He goes on his show and he tells people that he had bad couple of months, his show, and it's my fault that he had a bad couple of months and he couldn't pay his mom the $100 rent. Prove it, Rich. Prove that I was directly responsible for any financial problems you had. You can't. Maybe your financial problems are caused by your own mouth because you put mouth in gear before, putting, before having facts in hand. You always do. You always do because you're lazy and you won't do the work that it requires to have the facts in hand before putting that mouth in gear. There's a multitude of lies the guy's telling about me. And honestly, I don't care to waste airtime. Tonight I had a good time talking to a guy I, I think is an amazing and interesting character in conspiracy land. I don't need to waste time on this, Rich. You're not worth it. You're not worth it. And your numbers are in the shitter. And your numbers are going to keep being in the shitter because you do stupid things like do absolutely no research and then decide that that girl did nothing wrong. Did you research it? Did you know right now that she just got caught lying to everyone and telling everybody that she went to the police and she has a lawyer? People keep asking her for the lawyer's phone number. Crickets. But somebody looked into those claims of the police. Did you know? that in the country she's in, there's records, Rich. And someone is able to prove that she never went to the police and made any reports like she claimed. So not only is she a Nazi sympathizer, she's a liar. Maybe she belongs on your show. And that's the sad truth and whatever. And I, you know, I think it's so funny that you're going to bring up this goof thing. Like, that's all you got? Really? That I once joked about a goof, like we should make like wrestling videos, like, ooh, I'm going to beat his ass. You know, it was a joke. It was a spoof. And it was spitballing ideas. That's all it was. And did we do it? No. we Neither of us did it. So I don't know what, what planet is this guy on that that is the best. We caught him lying through his teeth about me 10 times. There's a video. On our channel here, 10 times Rich from Goofon lied about me. We caught him making fun of my paralyzed eye. Do you want me to play that video, Rich? How about I play that video next? Right? You think I got nothing left here? I have nothing. I have no more ammo left, right? Like, oh, I blew my load showing how third face fake things. No, because we have more proof than third face fake things recently. 
And maybe, Rich, just maybe, if you keep lying through your teeth about me, I will. I'll make a video 10 more times, Rich from Goofon lied, but I'm not going to make it lied about me. I'm going to make it 10 more times, Rich from Goofon lied to his audience, because we can prove you lied to your audience about this uh, fake fight thing. It took it way out of context. It was a comedy bit, a spoof, a, a goof, right? We can prove that you said that it's my fault that your show uh, isn't making any money or something, right? You couldn't pay your mom the hundred dollars rent or something. And you blame that on me. And there's more and more and more. And we can prove that you lied to your audience and said, the reason you stopped talking to me was over that fake fight thing. Hey, Rich, it can be proven when that happened. But you didn't do the work, shit. So now you just got caught lying to your audience yet again. I've told you before, I'm gonna tell you again, you're just not smart enough to do this with me. Apologize for working for hoaxer fraudsters and lying to your audience saying they haven't faked anything and maybe things will improve, right? When you do, when you make a mistake and God knows I've made plenty, you acknowledge your mistakes you learn from them and you move on. His problem is that he's not learning. That, you know, I can catch him lying to his audience 10 times and he doesn't want to address that. He won't address that. And then he lies again on his show and says, nobody ever proved I lied about anything. How many goddamn times do I have to prove that you lied to your audience, Rich, before you'll just acknowledge it and learn from it and move on? And the greatest lie is that he says, I started all this. I have the timestamps, Rich. I have the dates. I have the calendar. It's in my previous video, 10 times you lied about me. So stop lying to people and say, I started this. You started all of this because I had an argument with Third Phase of Moon and said they fake things. And it has been well established and proven that when people say that Third Phase fake things, you attack them even calling other show hosts pedophiles. Great, great. But this is where we're at and this is where we find ourselves. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't even know what to say. Well, look at this. Sweet Chicks with Kind of Generous $10 says good show. Unidentified S4, Kind of Generous $4.99. Uh, super sticker, thank you very much. Uh, much, much appreciated. And uh, we have John Griffin with a kind of generous $4.99. I believe we got them all. If I did miss any, we will call them out on uh, tomorrow night's show. So where I'm at with this uh, goof on mess is that I really don't want to waste any more time on this guy. I mean, it's worth, it's not worth it. I make a video saying 10 times he lied. And then he says, nobody ever proved I lied. The proof is in that video that you ignored. He, he had to ignore it, though, because he has no answer for it. So what does he do? Let's make up new lies about Steve Cambion to make him the bad guy, even though he keeps catching me lying to my audience. It's beautiful how many times I've caught him lying to his audience. And then he keeps making it worse by lying to his audience more. And I, you know, I can't help him. I can't help him. You can't help somebody that's just going to lie more to get out of the previous lies. Again, the best thing for him to do would be to acknowledge this mistake and learn from that and move on. But he's one of those guys, right, that just can never admit they're wrong, right? Never admit it. And, oh, uh, here's the other thing I love. He's telling everybody all the talking points. This is something that's very important and his audience and everybody should be aware of this. Everything negative that he's saying about me, Third Phase of Moon said in our live chat before our broadcast. It's like he copied and pasted what they said and said the same thing because he is being told what to say by Third Phase. It's very clear. And again, Rich, I can go into our chat pull all the comments that Third Phase of Moon said, said those things, and then pull the clips of you saying the exact same things. Are you, really? Come on, man. Stop taking talking points from the Idiot Brothers, right? You know, I used to say the two of them together can barely make one average human, you know, 
intelligence level, it looks like there's three of you now. And it's three on one, right? Oh, and there's another thing. Ali from Alien Attic can suck a dick. There, I said it. Because Ali from Alien Attic lets Rich twice now go on his show and lie through his fake teeth about me for an hour. Then Ali comes to me both times and wants me to go on the show with Rich, right? So this is great. It's like I'm being extorted for a guest appearance because Ali lets Rich from Goof On go on his show on Alien Addict and lie through his fake teeth about me for an hour. And Ali says, uh, uh, you know, I'm not taking any sides. That's the message Ali sends me. I'm not taking any sides, Steve, and I like you both. Bullshit, you're not taking any sides, Ali. Because if you weren't taking any sides, every time he lied about me, you would have asked him for the evidence or for a clip. Every time he said something that I never fucking said, Ollie, you would have said, you know what, uh, Rich, you shouldn't be just saying that he said those things. Do you have a clip of him saying that? Of course, Ollie didn't do that. He just sat there and let Rich lie through his teeth about me for an hour and do his damage control tour. He did it twice now. And twice after Rich did that, Ollie says, Steve, you really should come on the show and talk face to face. I have zero obligation to help someone and give somebody a free guest appearance of mine so they can generate money and views out of a disagreement after they let somebody slander me for two hours on their show. So no, Ollie, I'm not coming on shit. I'm not doing that. You let them lie about me for an hour straight twice. You didn't ask him for any evidence. You didn't ask him for any proof, right? And I think that this is by design to twist my arm to make me feel obligated to go over there and defend myself. And I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And you're right, Rich. Anything I have to say, I'll say on my own show. And you can take your little victory lap because you opened the phone lines and, and we're going to let any critics come on. And nobody had the balls. Bullshit. Nobody was baited and stupid enough to help you get views and grift for super chats. And as far as Ollie goes, I had nothing against him. But the more I thought about it, he did. He did. That's a factual statement. Ollie from Alien Addict, who's in with the Cousins Brothers too, right? It's a big club and I ain't in it. Let Rich come on and he'll let Third Face come on and talk shit on me for an hour if they want to, too, right? And, you know, part of me has to respect Ollie because he says he loves the drama. It gets so many views, the drama and the fighting. That's what he likes. And so part of me respects him for that. But the other part of me says, I don't have to participate in that. And I'm not going to help somebody that is actively helping somebody lie about me and spread lies. That's called slander, Ollie. You let a man come on your show and just slander me with no evidence, no proof, and just say things. He has no evidence or proof for those things. And were I a more vicious individual, I would include you in whatever actions I take about a stupid man slandering me on live streams on the internet. Because you do have some responsibility to just not let somebody sit there and slander somebody. But of course, you love the drama that shows about the fights. So every time there's a dust up, leave it to Ollie to swoop in and get Rich to come on and talk some shit about Steve Cambion. Then Ollie can come to me and say, well, you know, you really should come on and defend yourself. Yeah, I guess I have to because you're sitting there letting him lie through his teeth. And no, I'm not going to participate. No, I'm not going to be baited into uh, helping somebody get views and, you know, all of this. This is a joke, man. This whole thing is a joke. And again, anybody, anybody, friends, who thinks that anybody that works with or for Third Phase of Moon is at all credible or worthy of even listening to or believing when they say things is not somebody I want around me, near me. If you believe that anybody who works for third phase is credible or with third phase is credible, I can't help you. The facts are clearly established. They fake things for years and years. They've just been caught faking things recently in the past few months. 
They haven't changed. And the the whole like joke of Rich being essentially paid to be their attack dogs. Every time somebody comes after third phase, here comes Rich swooping in to defend them. Maybe they should grow a set of balls and defend themselves, Rich. Maybe that's the way that things could go. And, you know, it is unfortunate because Rich could have stood on the side of truth and righteousness and, and doing the right thing. He could have grew a set of balls himself and decided to stand on his own two feet without those clowns, right? I mean, haven't you sucked all the stupid people out of their sub base that you possibly can, Rich? Do you still think that's a good relationship for you? Is it a good look for you running around calling people frauds and fakes uh, while you're working for the biggest frauds and fakes in this thing? I, I don't think so. And you can blame me for your show's lack of prosperity, but I really think it's your own making you've done this to your own show you know by fat shaming people by calling people pedos or saying they have pedo friends and that may make them pedos by making fun of disabled people uh you know and the list goes on and on you you lost your twitter account because you made fun of trans people like this is ridiculous the fact that i have to defend myself from a guy like that or that somebody would let somebody go on their show and just talk shit for an hour with no evidence or proof. I, you know, there's, again, oh, by the way, here's the good news. Today, I am 120 days sober. And with my 120 days of sobriety comes some new lessons in life, like learning to accept the things I can't change. I can't, apparently, I can't change Rich as much as I thought for a time he was worthy of redemption or, you know, oh, well, maybe he's a good guy. It's just this third phase has him hypnotized into believing that they're going to help him somehow or something. I just I can't change that who that person is or what they choose to do or how they choose to blame others when their show numbers take a dive after they do all these stupid things. It's a stupid, stupid thing to fat shame people live on your show. Because some people in the audience may be overweight. They'll stop tuning in, Rich. It's a stupid, stupid thing to call other show hosts pedos or imply they have pedo friends. Because some people uh, might find that objectionable and stop tuning into your show. It's a stupid, stupid thing. A really stupid thing to defend a girl who is wearing Nazi earrings, Nazi uniforms, being on Nazi shows, talking about the good Nazis, because some people in your audience might be offended by your defense of that. So maybe, just maybe, Rich, maybe it's not me that's to blame if your show's not doing real well. Maybe it's your own choices. But again, I, I, I don't know what else to say about this. And, and yeah, some people love the drama. They want me to they want me to keep it up. They want me to invest more time and energy into proving that this guy lies to his audience. I've already proven it when he, you know, and that's what I tell Ollie. When he addresses the 10 times I already proved he lied or apologizes for those 10 times he lied, maybe I'll talk to him. If he apologizes for lying to his audience and saying third phase never faked anything, when we've clearly showed that they faked three videos recently, if he apologizes for that, maybe. But I have no obligation to talk to a guy who keeps lying about me, who keeps lying to his audience. You know, a snake is a snake, and he can slither around any way he wants, but it's not going to get better for him. It's just not going to get better. And, uh, yeah, so that's all I got for you, friends. Now, uh, I reserve the right to play. Uh, or you know what? I'm going to play it right now because I'm that kind of a. Yeah, let's. Uh... No, you know what? I'll do it another time. So uh, we went way over time again and we're now at three hours. So, uh, yeah, what can I say, friends? We're going to bounce on out of here. Uh I can take a few questions and comments from the live chat uh, before we bounce on out of here. This guy always ragging on people. I don't know. 
I don't know who that's about, if that's about me or others. <laughs> CR, at this point, you really can't make this up. Shaming is wrong. You always talking about this. Not really, Bob Birkins. I talk about it now when I need to, but I do think it's funny. I'm getting detention, right? Yeah, uh, you know, it's childish and it is stupid. It's like high school. But, you know, the diff the, I'm telling you what, though, there is a real difference between me and him. When I tell you that he lied about me, I can show you how he lied about me and prove it. He keeps saying I'm a liar and he never proves it. Then he lies and says, nobody ever prove I lied about anything. There's a video here, Rich. Ten times you lied about me. There's proof that you lied about me in it. So stop inventing new lies, bro. It's only going to get worse for you. It's only going to get worse for you. Oh, this is what happened. Rich was making fun of a shemale porn star and hitting on her too at the same time. The weird mess that's inside his head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. So nah, I'm going to bounce on out of here, friends, until tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. But I do deserve uh, I do reserve the right to uh, talk about this more succinctly. Maybe we'll make a video and we'll show people more lies and more times that Rich is lying to his audience and about me. And, you know, but that's the other thing I was saying. I'm 120 days sober. Some things I just have to learn to accept. I can't change the fact that I already proved that this guy lied about me 10 times. And instead of refuting that, he says he wants to debate me. What are you going to debate? You wouldn't debate the last time, Rich. I made the video 10 times you lied about me. Why don't we debate those 10 times? No, he invents 10 more lies. You know, I can't change that the guy won't admit that he lies to his audience that he got caught lying about me 10 times, that he got caught lying saying third phase hasn't faked anything in five years, that he got caught lying saying, if anybody proved that third phase faked anything recently, I just couldn't associate with him. I mean, I can't, I can't change things. He's not going to admit that he ever lied, no matter how much evidence or proof we have here. He's just going to keep on muddying the waters. He's going to keep on crying and complaining, blaming me for the reason his show's not doing well. Uh, and by the way, if all I did was tell the truth, Rich, and your and and because of that, your show is not doing well. What does that say to you? All I did was tell the truth here, and you could have been on the side of truth and righteousness. You could have done the right thing, but instead, you choose to uh, stay with those clowns. And you know, all I'll say, Rich, is best of luck to you. You're going to need it because it gets worse from here. When you don't admit your mistakes and learn from them, it gets worse. Oh, and there's other things he's lying about, like some mention of someone threatening his family. How dare you even imply, I categorically deny no one ever threatened. I never threatened Rich or his family. That is ridiculous. Uh, and again, where's the proof of that, right? Right. He just drops that like, oh, uh, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. Right. Great. Great. But, you know, am I supposed to be surprised that some guy who with no evidence or proof whatsoever would say things like you might have pedo friends, Stephen, and that might make you a pedo would suddenly event invent some threats to his family? You know, I can't change. So I, there's some things I can't change and I can't change in life that sometimes there's just slimy people who live on lies. There's just slimy people. And you know what you have to do? You have to cut those people out of your life like a cancer and never look back. Just roll on because they're not going to change. And those this dude's not going to change. It's just getting worse. Now he's going with this uh, with this Marina girl. Good. Good luck. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Can't wait to see how you try to defend her. And and then you said she did nothing wrong. There's you lying to your audience again, and we can prove it. But is it worth the time or energy? Probably not. Some people just aren't worth the time or the energy. So that's where I'm at. 
and that's where I find myself. I'd like to uh, say that this week we have a bang up week for you. We will be debuting our new series, Murder in UFO Land. And uh, it's a doozy. Uh, I love those talking points from Third Phase of Moon and Rich, though. I, uh, ha how dare I, you know, uh, host Anjali. I stand by the Anjali story. We investigated that girl and her claims from beginning to end. Rich says I bring nothing to the table, but there's one example of a story that I did a deep dive on. I interviewed people, I investigated the whole story, and I found out the truth of the story. He's never done that. He's never done a case from beginning to end, period. Never. But somehow he's going to tell you that I'm a bad guy for interviewing that girl. I was investigating her. Part of a good investigation is interviewing witnesses. She's the primary witness to her story. Sure, I interviewed her. Then we went and researched all of her claims. And largely, we proved that most of her claims were not reality. So I stand by that work. And as far as uh, interviewing Richard Doty, the first lie was I didn't even bother to ask him about the Benowitz case, but he, he got that wrong. He lied to his audience again, because yes, I did in the actual long form interview that I did. One other time, Doty just popped up with another friend of mine, Eric, the Awakening Man. I, I knew two minutes before showtime that he wanted to do that. I said, okay. In the previous interview, I asked him all about Benowitz. And in fact, I am the only person that ever got to ask Richard Doty if he regret, regretted what happened with Benowitz, if he would do things differently. I never saw him, anybody ask him that. So yeah, I interviewed Richard Doty because I wanted to ask him if he felt bad about Benowitz and what happened. Did, did he think that was necessary? Would he do things differently? I'm the only person that ever interviewed uh, Richard Doty and got to, and asked that to my knowledge. And to this day, people are citing that interview. I Last I heard, somebody's putting uh, snippets of that, quotes from that interview in a book. Where's your interview that was so good that somebody's putting a snippet of it in a book, Rich? I don't bring anything to the table. Uh, and the final point I love is that this clown says, I just researched four or five guys and I just replay the same thing over and over. No bullshit. I, I proved that before. I, we have done hundreds of stories here about hundreds of different people. Do I focus on some of them because I, I find them amusing? Like, uh, let's see, David Wilcock, Corey Good, Stephen Greer, and a few of the other bigger names, Elizondo. Sure, sure I do. But we keep researching new people, new stories constantly here. And for a guy that does absolutely zero research to complain about me not doing enough research is laughable, laughable. And finally, uh, for anybody who thinks that I repeat myself too much or talk about the same people too much, go look on Rich's channel and see how many shows that he's done talking about Lou Elizondo. Boy, cop. Pot, kettle black. Wow. I don't do enough. I don't, I just talk about the same people, right? Corbell and Elizondo. That's all he, that's majorly the two people he talks about. And again, I don't think he actually researched them. In my case, there's usually new stories involved. Like there was the David Wilcock GoFundMe investigation where we proved David Wilcock was running a GoFundMe scam with Pete Peterson. There was the David Wilcock, Emery Smith, PayPal donation scam. That was a different story. Do you understand, Rich? There were different stories, maybe about the same people doing scummy things, but we did research on each of those stories, each of those times. But I don't think he understands this because he's just going to slag me. And Stephen Greer lying and saying that an entire uh, company was murdered in Michigan. Of course, of course, man. I'm going to do a story about that and other times that Stephen Greer has been caught lying, like his free energy company or whatever. I investigate and research plenty of things, Rich. You don't. Show me anything. That guy's ever actually a beginning to end story where he investigated, interviewed the witnesses, came to conclusions, 
determined if a story was true or not with facts and evidence and hard work. You can't show me that because he doesn't do that. He just talks over everybody else's work. And let's talk about what third phase did this week. Great. We want to hear more about what the hokiest, fakest, fraudiest couple of guys in UFOs did this week. Great job, Rich. You're doing great. And he wonders why his show is suffering. According to him, it's my fault. But again, I got to learn to accept, right? I just got to learn to accept that some things I can't change. I can't change uh, anything about that guy. Can't. He's not. He's never going to admit that he lies. He's never going to admit that he'd been that we've caught him lying many, many times. And in fact, he very foolishly wants to continue this disagreement. And that, my friends, would not be wise for him, because if he thinks I can't prove that third face faked more things recently. He's dreaming. And then what's he going to say to his audience? Is he going to invent more lies? Is that how this works, Rich? Every time I catch third face faking more recent stuff, you're just going to invent more stuff to try to make me the bad guy instead of addressing? Why don't you address the facts and the evidence that we showed that third phase fake things in, what was it, March, April? February, March, and April of this year. You said they haven't faked anything in five years. Were you lying to your audience? Were you lying to everyone? I think so. And the facts and the evidence prove that he was lying to his audience, prove that he was lying to everyone about third face faking everything. And the fact, faking things recently, pardon me, and the fact that he doesn't address the evidence we showed that third face faked things recently, instead, choosing to just attack me personally and attack my character, right? What happened, Rich? You couldn't use the pedo thing anymore. You already fired that gun. You couldn't use the making fun of me being disabled anymore. You fired that gun, right? So now you're just going to make shit up? I, I don't know. It's amusing to me the lengths that this guy is willing to go to to muddy the waters. And let's be clear. I don't care if you're a fan of his. He lies to his audience constantly. We've proven over and over and over again. Maybe we'll start tallying them up, Rich. You want to continue this disagreement? Okay, I'll start making more videos. I'll clip out every time you lied. I'll show the proof that you lied. We can keep going like this for a year. And where do you think you're going to be at the end of it? It's foolish. It's a it's a foolish thing, but of course it would be foolish for me to waste any more of my time. He hasn't addressed the evidence. When he starts addressing the evidence instead of personally attacking me, maybe I'll consider a discussion about him. Until then, it's it's a fool's mission. I can show you, I've already showed 10 times he lied about me. He he won't address that evidence. I've already showed that he lied and said third phase never faked anything in the past five years. We showed three times recently. He won't talk about the evidence that third phase faked three videos recently. No, he's got to just come up with personal attacks about me because somehow he thinks that'll deflect from the fact. Everybody's stupid and will forget that he never addresses the evidence that we present. Everybody's so dumb We'll just invent new stories to make Steve Camby and the bad guy because he caught me lying to my audience many, many, many times. He caught me lying, saying third phase don't fake anything many times. He has no defense. And, of course, everyone is familiar with the saying, if you, if you, you know, can't attack, if you can't attack the evidence, attack the person showing the evidence. That's what he's doing here. It's very clear. So, I don't know. We are going to bounce on out of here, friends. But don't worry. We will be back tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with another exciting adventure into conspiracy land. Um, I am very happy to say that we'll have at least uh, some part of this new series murder in ufo land out this week and you're going to want to be here for that 
Uh, it's probably the best series that I've ever produced. We're slowly getting it going. Had a lot of hiccups getting to that point, but it will be here. And I hope you'll be here to hear and witness it as well. So uh, that's all I got for you. But I, I, I do want to say that I'm supposed to be uh, a Christian and a forgiving man. And I try to be. But when you're having trouble forgiving someone for the first set of 10 lies they told about you, and you're working on that, and then they just come out and throw another 10 lies out, it's very difficult. You know, I'm human like everyone else. And I mean, some of my friends will tell you that I don't hold a grudge and others will tell you I'll hold a grudge for the rest of my life. You know, I'm weird like that. It's unfortunate. Uh, every, this whole this whole situation is unfortunate. You know, I feel bad for the guy. He's, he's so short on money, begging for those super chats right? Not having any other income that he couldn't pay his mom the money and he, that he owed her or something. That's a terrible situation to be in. But I don't think lying is going to help him get, you know, improve the situation. But here we are. So I'll be back tomorrow night, friends, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, I'm Stephen Cambian. Good night and God bless all of you, especially you, Rich. I'm going to pray that you start telling the truth. Yeah.